reg do a record a regular rep afterwards. Yeah, that works for me. Okay. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, and that keeps that timely content very timely. timely. Yeah. Yeah. Down a rabbit hole where there is no giving, just taking. What's that? Yeah, you love it though. Well, we'll tell, we warn people we still don't want to be assholes about it. Yeah, but it doesn't mean everybody. I mean, it, we have some people who know we're good about it. Are you trying to meet yourself? <laughs> Me? Yeah, it's no, funny no, here, no, just I, the one side. I, 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 I didn't try to meet myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Rosh, he's like, you guys could, you guys would spoil it. Everybody spoiled it. I'm like, no, we're, <laughs> we're gonna try it. We'll spoil oh. it. We'll tell people we're gonna spoil it. But, like, like Pete, my friend, my, you know, my friend Peter, like, he put, he put tons of people on mute. Like, well, he should. Just, it's yeah. uh, here's a nutty idea. Don't go on Twitter. The world's oh, chat yeah. room. Don't go where people are talking if you don't want to hear people talk about the thing that they're interested in. Yeah, I mean, he had people who would like literally. I don't mean, I mean like, I am message. Like people, like his own, like I'm not gonna look at text messages from certain people who oh. will spoil it for him. Wow. Yeah. Hey, we're gonna spoil everything, but everything, guys. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> heads up, gang. You better have seen uh, Endgame by by the time you watch today's show. Yeah. Game of Thrones too. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. uh uh, just in terms of a hygiene thing, if we can at least like kind of delineate when a end game talk is starting and stopping, and then uh, Game of Thrones, just to okay, sure thing. keep everything all yeah, hermetically so, sealed, so we can have you know time time codes and stuff can be cool, a little uh, a little safer. We can have a graph. We'll make a graph. Yeah, I think we start with end game because that came out first. If that works for everybody else, sure. Yeah, what a weekend. Holy yeah, smokes. Right. I actually, yeah. this uh, like an hour ago, I had the thought like, uh, ooh, rough weekend for Game of Thrones to have such an important episode where it's like going to be potentially super overshadowed by one of the most amazing stories. Uh, yeah. Or, or, like, or, or, or was it? <laughs> ooh, yeah, oh, I mean, uh, uh, shade. Uh, I think there's only <laughs> one winner. Us. <laughs> Uh, although, yeah, no matter what you thought of uh, 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 Endgame, uh, Marvel and Disney will be able to dry their tears with the largest mountain of money ever gathered by a movie ever. Yeah, and, and, and very likely the first time a single movie won a team. I, I guess, you know, technically, maybe uh, uh, Frog Pants has a second movie. We'll see, but... They do. They, they, they got a second one, but uh, that, that might be the, the exception that proves the rule. They you know, never... what if it's a Weinstein movie that ended up in lawsuits? Can you count that against them? That, like, they had to pay out, like, hundreds of millions of dollars of settlement <laughs> penalties? <laughs> it's a class action lawsuit. Alrighty. What's going on? Oh, no, I'm... I'm just uh, just about ready oh. to do the show. <laughs> I I must have misheard you. But I thought I heard you go. Well, great. <laughs> and oh, I was like, no. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, alrighty. Well, let me check my three up. Boop. There we go. Alrighty, you guys uh ready to do the show? Yeah. Yep. All right then, Andrew, you can take it away in three, two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Maine, joined by Brian Brushwood. Yo. Hey, are you familiar with this phrase, uh, yoked? I had to look it up on Urban Dictionary. It means swole uh, mm -hmm. and muscular. Yeah. <laughs> I like that you yoked said it looks, means swole. swole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 so that's Justin Robert Young. Yeah, but you didn't know yoked? Nope, nope. I hadn't seen it before for whatever reason. It's also that's also a thing with with the shirts. If you're if you're taking the sleeves off a of shirts, you're yoking a shirt. Yoking a shirt as a verb. Yeah, M Mr. Bryce Castillo, uh, where where do you sit on this? I'm surprised. I'm I guess I'm not super surprised that you got swole or that you knew swole already. But it it's okay. Well, it's yeah. sw been around ten years. I just uh, for whatever yeah. reason nobody happened to have used the word yoked. <laughs> Before, uh, uh. Brian, Brian, Brian wasn't moving in the yoked circle. It's right. That's right. Hey man, we live in it. 
increasingly splintered uh, 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 microculture society. Okay, so now, uh, what was the... Can can you tell whatever the context was for someone saying the word yolked? Oh, I, I was responding to uh, YouTube comments and, and somebody uh, on the most recent video. We've had a couple of uh, really popular Scam Nation videos recently, and so a lot of people who haven't seen videos for a while are having them show up in their feed, and you can tell people who it's been a minute because they either say, whoa, you got fat! Or uh, they say, "Whoa, ah! you got you got muscular," <laughs> and so in this case, somebody said, "You got yoked," and I'm like, "Compliment or no?" And so ah, I had to look it up. Yeah. What I eat eggs like egg creams? What? What? <laughs> yeah, that's what? our next big video. That's our big algorithmic video. Is we have to now throw eggs at you. <laughs> <laughs> Prime Russian gets yoked. Gets yoked. <laughs> well, you know who else is yoked? Mr. Bryce Thanos. Castillo. Oh, <laughs> no, no, I already got it. Oh, there we go. There uh, we go. Thanos. Yeah. All right, is this our official announcement that from here on out we will be uh, spoiling Endgame, or do we want to give our... To, to, uh, we'll tell you the plan. We're, uh, we're going to start with Endgame. We're going to try to keep Endgame talk all in the Endgame spoiling section, mm -hmm. and then we're going to talk uh, Game of Thrones. So we'll try to keep Game of Thrones talk uh, isolated there. Specifically, 803, the big battle. The um, Is there a name for the battle? Battle uh, the, for uh, Battle of Winterfell. Long night. Yeah, the Battle of uh, the Winterfell Battle for Ratings. Night. Yeah, there you go. The the big the big beefy eight oh three. So yeah, we'll start with Endgame, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we yeah. got people in the chat. We're like, well, bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, understandable, understandable, folks. Um, okay, so there was a movie that came out this <laughs> weekend. <laughs> If you've been following along, we know comic stuff's not for everybody, and we know it's sort of a niche thing, comic book movies, et cetera, and Marvel, because um, not everybody grew up reading them, so not everybody's going to go see these movies. But they had a movie come out, and it was called The, uh, the, uh, the Avengers, um, the, the Endgame? What was it? That's in, right. In Adven a Adventures in a Game. Endgame. This is not, by the way, a lot of people were confused. They thought this was uh, a sequel to the to the Ralph Fiennes, Uma Thurman movie from The Avengers. That's different. That was a totally different British, th different guys. I know some people were probably upset because they were confused. Uh, can we just jump in? Yeah, let's jump in. It's good. It's a good movie. It's a good movie. It's a good project. The movie's good, folks. It's the the... the 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 stomach clenching end to an eleven year journey, it is something that a eighth grade Brian never in his wildest dreams could be even attempted, much less landed with the strength and quality that it did. It is amazing beyond words. Yeah, I, I, it did a thing that I was not expecting. Uh, I guess is kind of repetitive by the definition of what I'm about to say, but it surprised me. Like, I, I did not expect the movie to be what it was. Uh, I was was continually delighted by the moments that uh, it gave us. I think that there are some uh, uh, quibbles that you can kind of have from a meta level uh, about it, but in general, I, I can't imagine a movie... If you're going to make the decision that this is going to be a celebration remembrance and uh a uh, one last dance with this cast of characters uh then they went all in on it like it was it was exactly what you want uh down to the fact that the characters that we're gonna stay around with continue to have interesting things coming out of it the characters that aren't uh, uh got heroic send-offs i really liked it I'll make that very clear i thought it was a fine good movie uh, on the and, and the Russo brothers are my favorite team and, and the the writers uh, Marcus and P I forget the, the Feely I think the guys who are writing these are doing a fantastic job and the writers doing this. Walking into Infinity War, we're like, man, this, how are you going to handle this this first half of this part? You know, you've got to do the first half of something and juggle all these threads, be able to manage all of this. And I loved Infinity War. Infinity War is one of my favorite. It's absolutely my favorite Avengers movie of all, you know, and it is by, by a major margin because what they did, they showed, yes, you can do the things if you'll go, it's hard to do. So I loved infinity war, Thought infinity war is fantastic, eminently rewatchable. I liked in game. I enjoyed in game. I don't put it on an infinity war level for me. There are 
parts of Endgame that to me were like, I'm going like, it's okay. I mean, this if this were another Marvel movie, it'd be okay. But like, you know, when I'm watching the Thor story, I mean, it's funny. The first part we meet him, you know, we see what he's doing. It's like funny. And then when I'm like the Thor story and this, I'm like, this is dragging for me. You know, the 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 shenanigans throughout time kind of thing followed a very familiar pattern which sort of that's where it didn't surprise me and it kind of did like well everybody's gonna meet somebody <laughs> there's themselves or somebody close to them and we're gonna have this sort of nostalgic sort of moment that's gonna drag for me is it that happened and so i was like i was like all right okay we have this scene i'm gonna go use the restroom because it's gonna be this i've seen this you know which i kind of like you know the, the russo brothers and the team writing team kind of have been great at bringing me stuff that felt different but I mean, if you want the nostalgia, that's fine. But the, the, for me, there were parts that just really dragged, you know. But um, the execution was wonderful, though. So, so well, and that 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 to me is the meta element: is that ultimately Endgame. I've I've been comparing to Vitamin C's song "Friends Forever." <laughs> like it is this kind of graduation anthem for a decade of Marvel movies, and it it's saccharine. It's overly sweet. It's it, it is it is certainly reliant on those ideas. So. If you're Andrew Maine and you're like, well, I would have liked something interesting and fresh, you're not going to get it. But if you are there to see Tony Stark, you know, have the conversation with his dad that that he has never had before, uh, if that's something that you uh, uh, revel in, which which I was more into, uh, then I, I I could understand where it was certainly not a moment that I was like, oh my god, what a fresh and interesting complex thing. Well, but, my, but it run me through the paces. Well, let me clarify. When they did went back to the first Avengers battle, the Battle of New York, I yeah. like that because stakes were there were stakes. Yeah, the outcomes change things, happen things like that. I like that because it was a thing. It changed the outcome of stuff, and I enjoyed that because it was like, oh, it was played out differently. It's kind of a fun riff on like Back to Future Two kind of thing. But it was a, it was a real challenge, real stakes, all of that. I enjoyed that part, and that that was formulaic. But there were consequences, and there were outcomes that were different than you expected. The Tony Stark, you know, Howard Stark scenes were like. We need to go back here. We're going to go back here, and it's not going to make a difference. We're just going to – we can have this scene. We could have just – did like at the end of the movie, Cap's like, I'm going to go back, you know, and then like, yeah, we're back because everything happened the way we wanted it to happen and, and no reason to tell you what happened where it co they could have introduced complications. They did cool stuff with like – I loved how like, you know, they have the plan, and then Thanos is so friggin' smart in every dimension. He's like, um, I think there's something going on, and I'm going to F with you. And it was – Great. I, mean, I, I love that part. So that, that I guess a part of it's like so much was great. I'm like, well, it's good. But, you know, I've seen your good material and I want more of that. Uh, I think that we don't have the perspective that the vast majority of people will experience this in. It, it's weird to um, we realized over on the Cord Killers podcast that it is a fundamentally different experience to watch a television show that has a long story arc as a binge session uh, versus watching it week after week. Um, oh, for sure. Right. And, and, yeah. and even though we're only what, three, four days into the release of this, we have to remember that we are the last of people who will be experiencing these movies as individual movies. If you think about it as where it is in the overall story, the, the pacing and everything changes. Um, for example, uh, as a movie, a uh, bit weird that we start with 25 minutes of 9-11 recovery, you know, uh, but as a if, if as a second half of one movie, Infinity War, uh, it makes a lot more sense. And to be honest, all of that opening stuff where they brought home the real world consequence, uh, the, the destroyed psyche of, of, of planet Earth. Uh, I loved all of that, and I wanted more of that in Infinity War because I found it really weird that Infinity War was like, yeah, so anyway, half the world died. End of movie. Um, but and uh, but I understand why they did that for, uh, for their reasons. Um, and if you pull out even farther and look at it as a 20, uh, or I guess it would be what? Uh, roughly a, a 50 to 60 hour novel uh, that, that, that we're experiencing then yeah do a victory lap uh, go see your dad uh I, I, I get a little wobbly on the logic of time travel and all that stuff also i've i've softened on all 
strict interpretations of time travel stuff ever since I, I read more and more about the many worlds theory. I'm just like, and, and, and they sort of nod to that with uh, Tilda Swinson talking about like, that's great for your timeline, but what does that do to my timeline? And I was like, yeah, yeah good point. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm with you, Brian. I, 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 in general was like, at the point that they introduce time travel, at the point that they're like, okay, well, we're going to go back and visit all these old characters that have died. We're going to go back and visit all these old moments. I, uh, you know, I, I kind of just gave myself over again. It was, it was friends forever. Nobody thinks that friends forever is the greatest song ever, but you know, if you remember that time it played during your high school graduation, you have fond memories of it. And, and that's, that's ultimately where where I was with Endgame. I I actually I very much agree with Andrew that I do think that Infinity War is a better movie. I think that it is a better and more complexly constructed movie. I think that there are parts of Endgame, and this is what really kind of surprised me, is that tonally it like you know saddles a 9/11 uh, survivor support group next to I just peed my pants joke with with Ant Man trying to figure out uh uh you know the the time travel stuff and uh, you, you have some really wackety schmackety stuff with Thor and and the 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 newly merged uh Hulk. So uh there's there's a lot of you know jumping around that's there. I don't know if it is the most, you know, well constructed movie and and I think that of all of Andrew's criticisms I, I I do agree with. They just didn't bother me because I was swept up in the moment. Well, I, I, but, I'm not I, was, but, I wasn't sit, sitting there going Err, but like Brian, your point about the beginning of the, the the where the world you know was stuck. My my issue was like I felt it was, and then maybe I have to watch it again. Although that's saying I watched I walked out of eighty four ready to go watch it again. In this one I'm like eh, well, you know maybe watch it at home. But I thought that that world to me it felt inconsistent because in one minute Ant Man's walking through you know San Francisco from Planet of the Apes you know and it's just this devastation and stuff. And then we see the shot of the Statue of Liberty with all of these boats tied up around it i'm like oh wow this world's amazing then we're in like a fun diner and everything else is normal and i'm like i don't know what world i mean maybe it's like oh some things are back to normal i'm like yeah but it kind of feels like the master wide shots show you this but then we go in close for jokes and fun stuff it's normal well uh i i I think that um uh if you want to get into the weeds, there's plenty of weeds to get into on on this. Uh, but I took all of that to uh, to be a nod to the fact that, oh, wait, this is like a low grade version of the story of The Stand. Like uh, in, in The Stand, 99.9% of all humanity dies, but all their stuff is there uh, mm-hmm. and, and it changes, you know, everything. Think about the economy and all that stuff. This is not a movie about the socioeconomic ramifications of losing 50% of your popul- population. That is a very interesting story, but there are other stories that that, that explore all of that. Uh, and They're so, going to have a meeting like, let's talk about fiscal policy, guys. We've got to figure out well, how yeah, to uh, Monetary well. supply. Let's talk about mass looting. Let's talk about – look, there's a billion really interesting stories uh, of, of what happens to the survivors. Big, big, and, big, big, big Avengers fanfare. Uh, uh, a teletype intro. The Fed. <laughs> <laughs> well, well and by, by having that five year time jump, they kind of can smooth over a lot of those things, it, it, right? That to me felt like the bottle that they're like, yeah, a lot of stuff happens, and you're going to have a lot of questions. We're not answering any of them, but we're going to give a hint that a lot of stuff has gotten really. Uh, that that everybody's doing the best they can, and we're going to convey that with uh, uh, you know, like there's no uh, there's half as many garbage people, and and this, there's a lot of garbage, and eh, we're we're figuring all this stuff. And, and it, like if you want to talk about world breaking stuff, I wouldn't be so concerned with the beginning of the movie so much as the end because that was a fascinating decision that they took away half the planet, and then didn't bring them back. And then five years later, what happens when the population just doubles overnight, man? Yeah. Hey, by the way, big marriage goal to Hawkeye for keeping his wife's cell phone charged at and the running. plane. And <laughs> For yeah. five years. That man, I'll tell you what, he stood by his woman. <laughs> While he's yeah. out murdering cartels and Yakuza, he's just like, oh, oh, shit, is AT&T still set to auto pay? <laughs> uh, his story was also another one I'm like, I'm like. I thought that was I the weakest. I was I was the least into Hawkeye's jam, although it was it was great to give us a quiet 
apocalypse moment at the beginning to, to watch a quiet 9 11 just yeah, the, as a standalone the, 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 thing the, the intro came close to justifying all the time we spent in the farmhouse on ultron yeah uh, <laughs> it was, finally that had some worth to me especially because i remember because that's the opening scene i'm thinking well oh man he got lucky none of his family died this is this is a fun outdoorsy moment, and then you know they all. Hey, they were all very lucky. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> but, but I mean, <laughs> and so yeah, I uh, the the other thing we we were talking about this just a, a little bit earlier, but what I really enjoyed about Endgame is that it's it wasn't the same structure that all of these other Marvel movies have, which is just like okay. We need to go get a thing. So we go to a set piece and we didn't quite get the thing. So now we got to chase the bad guy to another set piece. And, ah, we didn't we punch him hard six enough. Things, Bryce. What? I'm so hmm? We had to get six things. But it, it wasn't, it, 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 I don't know. It, it didn't feel as like, uh -huh. as, as, can, as very neatly three structured, three act structured oh, yeah, as the definitely. other movies are. Like it was a lot of interplay and a lot of fun bits um, that kind of made the three hours feel worth it. I mean, and three hours. How about that magic trick? Uh, I don't. I can't think of another movie that three hours blows past that fast as as this. I mean, really, like I, I, it was. It was mostly kind of disorienting to me because I had no idea where we were in the story. Like, like at, at the point that Thanos uh, shows back up to the Avengers uh, uh, headquarters, I was like, "Oh, I guess this is our end." Like, I because otherwise, I had no idea what we were doing or where we were going. Uh, uh, but then, you know, when it becomes time for the final battle, it becomes time for the final battle. And yeah, I, I thought that was a very, that was a great way to go to have that. I was, I felt every minute of that three hours. I'll point that. Well, I'm just going to say that it was, I was, did not fly by for me. It was like, cause it's like, cause I've been seeing like the time travel thing. I'm like, ah, they just did that just so they could meet. There's no story here. <laughs> like, I'm just like, I'm like, uh, uh, all right, let's get the next thing. But, uh, um, that battle, the final battle is great. That was a wonderful, delightful sort of, you know, hey, uh, no, we're, this is a big moment. We're going to bring everybody together. I'm like, oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, no, that that was the capo de capo, like superhero team up of all time, you know, quite possibly never to be topped. Yeah. The... And they, 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 they definitely stuck that landing. Uh, can I tell you my favorite part about the movie, though, uh, was when a certain character said, hey, don't expect me to see me in the rest of the movie. <laughs> and then you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I almost jumped up out of my seat and started cheering. Yes! <laughs> I like I like Captain Marvel much better in this movie than in her own movie, though. So I mean, did I! She, she oh, had... it was great! You know, <laughs> well, she showed up, she said, like, three things, well... and she said... See you later, guys. Uh, expect me in the final 10 minutes. And then she showed up. She did great in the final 10 minutes. Woo! But it, at least it felt, that felt justified, right? She was like, hey, I'm doing the thing that you guys are all doing for Earth, but for a thousand other planets. But more importantly, I need and... you to know that I'm doing it because I'm very powerful. If that wasn't clear, hi, it's me, Captain Marvel. I'm very powerful. Sure. I'm so powerful. Oh, I'm sorry. Kill Thanos. I'll do that by myself, even though you all together couldn't because I'm very powerful. Yeah. yeah. I will say that 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 uh, uh, chopping his head off thing definitely got me. Like, I was definitely like, well, I have no idea where the hell this is going now. Yeah, I, doing like, it at the beginning. Uh, reality Stone, they're going to walk away and he's going to go back to making his little creamy broth. And like, oh, 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 oh their journey ends. Now no, I'm going to uh, go back. Mm, try this bula bay. Oh, I killed my friends. That was, uh, in fact, thematically, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I, how many Avengers were there for it? I wonder if Thematically, they made sure it was six or something, so it'd be super on the nose that it's a SEAL Team Six moment, like uh, like Nebula, Captain Marvel, Thor, uh, da, 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 da. and it, it might. Uh, let's just say for sake of discussion, but 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 this no. was mm -hmm. we had a nine eleven, and then we had they got Osama bin Laden, and and that moment of the hollow Pyrrhic victory was what I loved that they did five years later. And it's like, despite having been the guy who got Thanos, just cutting to broken, destroyed Lebowski Thor was 
great. It was, uh, I really dug all that. Yeah, you know, th- that, the, 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 the Thor stuff I really liked. Because again, it was, it was a surprise. It was an interesting wrinkle for him. They obviously want to continue to take that character into more Guardians of the Galaxy, Thor, Thor Ragnarok direction. Uh, so it, it felt true to me there. Uh, I, I I do think that I never fully bought where I think they ultimately wanted that. Ca- like they wanted Thor to be like mental breakdown. Right. right. And it, it never quite got there for me. But then again, in a movie with so many emotionally resonant moments, <laughs> like that so, one firing didn't really kill me. Uh, there is a shorthand in storytelling uh, that I think a lot of people, a lot of stuff was not said or sold uh, correctly or to my satisfaction in Captain Marvel uh, because it didn't need to be because uh, anybody, uh, you know, the idea being that uh, women don't need to be told uh, certain things because they've lived uh, life as a female. Um, I felt that with the Thor stuff very strongly. As somebody who went to California and dropped everything and white knuckled for a year of production and then came back broken and has since uh, packed on <laughs> a, a couple stone, uh. Uh, it, it, it spoke to me. Uh, I, not not in like a, a huge important way, but it's like they didn't need to oversell or explain all of that. Like I know. Uh, I, I know for me that it's uh, like, no, oh, my I, God, I, I relate in, in 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 the cabin. I think, you know, you got it really. It was it was more the moment it, when he's back in Valhalla and yeah. uh, uh, he's like they're they're trying to like he flakes out and then winds up accidentally seeing his mom and everything where it's like and, and it's not even really like a thing with the acting or the writing necessarily. Uh, I guess maybe it's a little bit with the writing, but uh, there in he never shifted like you never saw the clown kind of behind the makeup. And as soon as you introduce him as a comedic character, dramatically, if he's flaking out, he can either flake out because he's a wacky guy or he can flake out because his hands are shaking and he, and he has just gone into shock. Right. Um, and, and he, he feels numbness in his limbs. And I, I, it never really turned that, that cylinder for me. Uh, Side note, um, can we talk about what a jerk move it was for him to steal alternate dimension Thor's hammer? I love yeah, all that. Right? Hey, man, left many him worlds. Defenseless to protect the realms. I mean, I, I, look, he uh, get another hammer. Yeah, I, 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 exactly. He's like, yeah, he'll go see Tyrion right. and he'll forge him a new one. Whatevs. Like, I went through it. He can too. Uh, well, yeah, because it wasn't like a totally big deal. Those, those fractured timelines won't exist, right? No, they'll exist. What, but but on their own timelines. Uh, with the yeah, many worlds that, theories, that like timeline Thor there does not have a hammer. Yeah. So, oh, so yeah, yeah, you're right. No, because he didn't return the hammer like they no. returned. No. What, wait, wait no. Captain, yes, he did. Captain oh, took Captain. the hammer. Oh, that's yeah, right. Captain, Captain took the hammer. Captain took yeah. the hammer. Captain returned everything back. Uh, the stones and the hammer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, so that oh, does tie that up. I'm glad. That's what I love about the writers for this, who did do, wrote this, was they're very good at those little details. The, hey, wait. No, it's Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. My bad. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, Thor was still a jerk for taking it in the first place. Though. <laughs> you know? uh, Captain America lifting Mjolnir was the fucking biggest. <laughs> oh, no, it was great. Yeah, yeah, was, that time goes. Yeah, like that. <laughs> was the biggest moment. I mean, other, in, the, like, in the entire MCU, the, I felt that the biggest single character moment, like the everyone kind of coming in at the at the beginning of the battle, was like the big thing for me. But him getting the hammer and and wailing on the shield and wailing on Thanos, that was that was great. That was uh, one of like two moments in the movie that got like a whoop out of the audience. Yeah, can we have a, a brief sidebar on nerd whooping? Where are we at on nerd whooping? Because I'm ready to petition the Alamo Draft House to add it to the list of things that you are should not be allowed to do. That's fine. Really? Why? What? Yeah, also, uh, no clapping. No expressions Ex- of joy. Think, uh, clapping Except during... Don't whoop. smile, because it might offend the person next to you. <laughs> well, it just... Yeah, I don't know. It, it gets... Uh, and, and also, if, if you can no muster the courage, try, try to avoid gasps as well. Like, uh, there's going to be some surprises. We all know there's going to be surprises. Are you you don't need to you convey that you're that you've surprised. Never gotten, you've, never, you've never gotten annoyed by excessive nerd whooping. I mean, I actually, I I did not during the movie, but <laughs> during, of all things, uh, the, the special edition release of uh, Star Wars, uh, A New Hope. I remember... With uh, the audience laugh track. Uh, th- 
the audience behind me was all like, "Oh my God, when I see Chewbacca, I'm gonna yell this. I'm gonna lie to that." And 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 I and I was that guy, and I was like, "Or hey, why don't we just watch the movie? Doesn't have to be <laughs> like." I don't like like I hate like I know what that is. That drives me nuts. That That's like I'm going to show yeah. you That's all that I know it. Is that you know that and there was a guy who much like there's like the, a trope in golf that people just yell get in the hole as mm. the ball is like traveling to the to to the pin. There was just a dude who just had his catchphrase of like say it whenever he knew that there was like a big catchphrase or a callback or something. Oh. He would just say loudly. He would just go, say it. And I'm just like, do you, did you raise a, all an right, order I, card? I, and all, all right. Because yeah, su- that, that does suck. That uh, guy sucks. For, he should for the record, all of this high-roading is coming from the guy who shouted out to dead silence in the theater at the premiere of Star Wars, impersonating Mr. Plinkett uh, during the, the previews uh, of Star Trek. He goes, that's not well, Star Wars. That's a preview. <laughs> Previews. Before, before the Look, whatever you were, you were the comedian, up. so proud of your material that you gave an unwarranted, unlicensed performance and wow. stepped in front laugh. of the stage. I got a good laugh out of that. The the other uh, big whoop moment for the theater that I was in was at the Women of Marvel scene. Okay, uh, which. Uh, seemed to be the setup for a really good sequence, and then they immediately fell on their collective faces, which I thought kind of undersold the power of doing a big hoorah women moment. That I was. Think that was maybe an unfortunate way to send no, that. I, I I I viewed that as you know they were they were uniting as everybody was, and everybody took two steps forward, and then had to kind of rugby pitch it to the to the next person, and and that was part of it. Regardless, mm. that brief pop up ad was artless and crass, did not belong in the movie, and I felt... Pop-up ad for... For what? Uh, uh, all Marvel. All women Marvel. <laughs> I mean, it was... Right. Like, it was... Uh, pop-up ad uh, for women? For yeah, women? Yes. No. It, I, 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 <laughs> I, I, like, I was... I was sitting... Bonnie and I were completely lost in the spell of this story. My daughter, Penny, uh, was there for it. Uh, we were... So in the moment, tears streaming, excitement, joy, you know, that moment uh, where, where all the, the heroes show up and then without any justification was was essentially this 10 second vignette that said, whose message was 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 women are great. Am I right? And it's like it was so obviously shoehorned in and didn't belong there. I felt from my wife. I it was the one moment that we did not hold hands during that movie. We were completely bonded That's how upset with women brian was no he no no no. it hand. wasn't me who let go like i felt bonnie's hand tense her fingers extend and i felt her draw back cross her arms and radiate grossness with with with, with that stuff it was it it did not belong in the movie and it did not add anything and i did not I, like it i'm i'm i i it, it certainly takes you out of a bit. You're like, well, this is convenient, <laughs> you know, or <laughs> you know, and I'm like, I get it, but I'm like, man, I sat through another movie. I won't mention that was two hours of that. <laughs> and, and really, I was, really, really bad writing in my opinions. I was fine opinions. with, I was, that... fine with the, I was fine with the, the, the minute and a half sequence. Uh, uh, although look, it, it, you're, you're absolutely right, Brian. It was a gigantic billboard of like, Oh, they're all here. Like they all gathered at, uh, uh, the, like, uh, yeah, it was, I don't know. It was, it was a blemish on what, to me, was otherwise a a fairly perfect roller coaster. But, but, but you know, but that's the thing though is that, to me, that's part of the fact that they're just hitting these nostalgia moments, and and the movie is wrapped around the moments. The movie is wrapped around whether or not you care about the fractured father son relationship of. Tony and Howard Stark, whether you care about the female empower, um, empowerment elements that happen through uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp and Captain Marvel, whether or not you care about uh, the, the the comedy of Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor Ragnarok, that they we went through the tour. It was It's a small world of Marvel themes and moments, and that's one of them. And it might be people's favorites, it might be, be other people's, uh, uh, you know, it might uh, stick out like a sore thumb, but I would say that there's probably one moment for all of them. For, for there, there's one moment amongst all the things that they did, be it the 
uh, the, the, the intellectual uh, uh, world building uh, meeting of the minds of Dr. Str- or, uh, the, the ancient one and Bruce Banner or the, the father son stuff that felt off to somebody for some reason. I, I would, I would say like my, my issue with that moment is not cool. They all happen to be there. Cool. Was it then that kind of winked? Hey, what's special about this? And it's like, well, you know, you kind of, you kind of deflated it. It was kind, you kind of let us arrive at like, man, these are some amazing kick-ass heroes. And like, oh wait, oh, yeah, man, that's awesome. You're like, oh, like yeah, no, look, look at us, look, well, look what's going. It's like it was like I would, it was well, like it, another Disney it, movie. There was the, what was it in Solo? Like, guess who the villain is? It's a woman. <laughs> well, yeah, we live in a very complex world now <laughs> where women can play complex characters. This is a thing we do now, and that you're patting yourself on the back makes me feel like you're behind the time <laughs> well it, it, that's that's what it read as to me like uh, just like that that reveal like a girl is your mind blown you never knew a girl could be a villain and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's what this felt like and it especially uh felt um un- if if your goal was let's say your stated goal is to make people uh, uh, understand that women are powerful and can be powerful. Great, congratulations! You gave me two and a half hours of that in the form of Black Widow being one of the best, awesomest characters in, in the whole freaking thing. Uh, uh, yeah, you did it with with all of the the strong female characters that you have. But then, but then they put a hat on a hat, and they shouldn't have done that. Yeah, and also I they mean, failed cause, immediately. Cause, cause, yeah, and they, it, yeah. It, 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 it will never bug, not bug me that they all completely fumbled, and Iron Man and Captain America had to save the day again. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bryce. Hate to be the one to say it. Um, that was wrong too. What? Oh no, it's just not. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh man, is there anything I mean uh, uh well, the, I, the, go. Look, I, I was I was excited because like we had like uh we see the very I mean one uh, the very beginning, the Tony Stark's daughter, and first I'm like, oh, this is a time travel story. This is bad because he's going to lose his daughter. But uh, when we see the rescue, you know, the the, the rescue, iron, I'm like, oh, cool, we're going to get like, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow's character, the Pepper Potts, doing a lot more of this and kind of thing. And she seemed strangely okay with Tony Stark dying at the end, though. By the way, it was kind of like she'd been expecting this kind of thing. Like, it's okay, Tony. See, I, <laughs> to be honest with you, I thought I was going to find you in your shop, slumped over your workbench a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Let's be honest. We were living on borrowed time. Yeah, <laughs> that was one of my favorite moments. Was uh, traditionally when you do a time travel fix for because uh, what what we were told is like oh the secret um, the speculation was oh the soul stone's still out there so and so the soul stone we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna all gather together and wish around the soul stone and bring him back or something like that and instead. Uh, like, no, none of that's happening. The stones are definitely gone forever. It's like, well, crap, what do we do? And then they just wallow in the, the misery of like, well, that five years later was was an yeah. awesome moment to just sweep aside any theories you had cooking on the back burner and be like, nope, we're just going to live as, as, as people uh, recovering mm-hmm. uh, with grief. And then... Okay, so we bring time travel back, but it's not to go back and fix anything. It's just to, as they say, time heist, to steal the ingredients so time that heist. we can fix it over here. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I, I, I dug the hell out of that. Yeah, yeah, it was a great way to get into the whole, you know, we can't fix our own past. You know, we can't fix our own. That was a great, great solution. You know, it was a great, because otherwise it's like, you know, then they had that discussion, why not kill baby Thanos? Uh, oh, you know, two, like, uh, two things. Two What's things that? I caught the second viewing, but didn't see the first. Uh, number one, uh, very sly that in the middle of the chaos, guess who's definitely back to being alive in the MCU and has a Tesseract? Oh, Loki. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like Wait, after. Does the, oh, yeah. Does the Tesseract yeah, yeah, that give was... him the power to time travel? No, though? no, but he's alive because he, uh, 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 he's got a Tesseract in uh, that dimension. Uh, yeah, and although I, 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 I mean, I, I, don't that, they have a Loki series dimension. coming? Well, they do, but they also have a Black Widow series coming. The the, the Black Widow movie they're supposed Black to take Widow place movie. before yeah. these events, right? But well, and, and but, like yeah, but, that's but what Brian, I'm yeah, that was that like yeah, when Loki you saw like be... as soon as Loki picks up the test rack, I'm like, well, that's how they're bringing him back. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and and just in the chaos, I didn't really note that the first time through uh, because I was more focused on the problem of the Infinity Stone not being available. Uh, but uh, second of all, the uh, uh, oh crap, what was it? It was oh, it's at the end. 
Uh, g- give me a second to just remember sure. this. Uh, tangent moment of that. Captain America versus Captain America was a very fun fight. That was very that cool That was to see. a fun fight. That was a fun I, fight. I don't and usually it, get into like, oh, what, who's going to fight who? But like Captain Fight and Captain was really good. Uh, well, you other, don't... other thing it... I did not notice the, the first time but did the second okay. is uh, when Tom Holland, Spider-Man, uh, <laughs> sees his buddy at school, I'm like, it's five years. Uh, why are they still in high school? Mm-hmm. And then I realized I realized the entire cast, the next movie, it's got to be that all of their friends were dusted and they happen. To, there's got to be some moment where like, oh, my God, we're five years behind all of our friends. Because uh, well, some of them will be. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I think or maybe. Yeah, I guess maybe some I, of them yeah, could. Yeah, age. We, we don't we don't we don't know when Far From Home takes place it's supposed to be uh, right after Endgame. it's supposed to be right after right especially after. because uh oh, it, yeah. th- they're calling it the end the official end of the phase three yeah well i mean yeah but uh initially i thought that, that they were they were being cagey on it so unless there's been a another another announcement but i hope i i i am i had the exact same hope uh from uh for coming out of that that like that's going to be a wrinkle to this, uh, uh, you know, fairly grounded high school story that we that we began with in uh, mm-hmm. the first Spider-Man. That it's like, oh my God, we were all, we were all dead, and now here we are, and but now we're way behind. So and so's already working at Google. <laughs> Like yeah. he goes home and it's like Aunt May's turned his room into like you know her little art pottery barn studio. Yeah, I, I guarantee you, <laughs> there's definitely. a scene of that. I 100 percent guarantee you. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, like, I think that. You know, like the Loki thing was cool. I'm like, okay, cool. It's a way to bring him back in there, and the little, the little things they, 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 you know, they, that are planted, you know, are, are, are cool. You know, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, I'm not like the, the MCU. Like, I've looked at the slate coming up, and, you know, I'm super stoked about Spider Man. But after that, it's like, okay. They, right. they haven't talked too much about the next films. I mean, we know, I guess, there have been talks about, like, the Black Widow thing, but is how extensive have they announced this Phase 4 Well, stuff? we know, we know like, next year is supposed to be Black Widow Eternals, mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, then we're doing, there's a Black Panther 2, there's going to be a uh, Doctor Strange yeah, 2 at I, some I, point, I, Guardians yeah. 3, there's Shanghai or whatever, I forget what that one is, that's another one that's in development, um... Yeah, we're looking at the slate here. Spider Man, Black Widow, the Black Eternals, Widow Eternals, which is, um, uh, yeah, Doctor Strange two, Strange two, Black Panther two, twenty twenty one, Shang Chi, yeah, yeah. Uh, Guardians three, three, of course, uh, and then Disney Plus stuff, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the WandaVision thing, the Loki thing, and a Hawkeye thing, which can, is about uh, his daughter. Uh, can we explore just real quick? Uh, I, I think they did a really smart thing of ending both Captain America's story and uh, Iron Man's story in hmm. two different ways. Uh, Iron what Man... What do you end? Captain America, Steve Rogers is going to announce he's running for president in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He looked a lot like Biden. <laughs> <laughs> you know he could do it, too. You know he could be... Oh, my God. No. <laughs> are you kidding? Dude, he crushed. He'd be the new Eisenhower. <laughs> Four yeah. more terms. Four <laughs> more terms. Is uh, America ready for a hundred and twelve year old president? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, and uh, but but what's great about the the way they landed it is I figure we're gonna see some kind of um, uh, uh, we're gonna continue to see Tony Stark and uh, Steve Rogers. It'll be uh, Steve Rogers at some point. We're gonna see a Marvel movie set in the 1960s or something. Uh, fingers crossed. Please let it be a Fantastic Four and let it be good. Or maybe a Doom movie that would be amazing. Uh, and then, uh, but because we don't know that he no longer has that gap, we can go to you know a de-aged or or whatever. Find it like he can be 58 years old, Steve Rogers, at the right moment in there. Uh, light, so so you can have him be age appropriate if the movie takes place at the right time. I guess you Sep- could, though. His whole thing was to kind of have have a vacation. Well, I that's mean, exactly it. Could, and, well, you, he's got ex- course ex- him, except but... for that one wild weekend. Exactly. Like, hey guys, you know I'm out of the game, but uh, but good luck. Oh wait, I guess I'm showing up to save your butts. Uh, bye. It's uh, I'm going back to my quiet life. No, but, they, but they can save they can save Captain America for any kind of. Uh, uh, the movie that takes place in the past, if they want to, they have they have that tool in their toolbox. Should they they need to uh, have it, and then well, 
They can have Tony Stark pop in from another dimension. Uh, well, <laughs> that won't happen. I think. I think uh, future movies. If we ever Robert see Downey Steve Rogers, is too expensive for that. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I think he'll do uh, voice work and be DH because I'm certain that at some point they'll be like, "Oh, it's me." Like, you're like, "Yeah, I couldn't uh, resist helping you guys out, so I made this digital avatar of myself. I'm still as snarky yeah, as ever." Yeah, but but, but I'm, I'm saying, if we're inventing reasons to bring Chris Evans back in, who kind of wanted to move on, I'm sure RDJ they wanted to bring him back. I'm like, like you can. You know, right. Everything's on a table. They, they, they could figure it out. I, as soon as they they showed him doing the final, like they, they they made such a big deal about him recording messages and and playing back messages, I kind of just like half assumed like that we're going to be getting Tony Stark Force Ghost. Uh, you right. know, like oh, like, I was thinking he'd be the voice of like Tom Holland Spider Man suit or something. You know, like hey kid, let me give you some advice. Yeah. I knew you're. I oh, knew that this works. was going to happen, and so I saw this this Michael Keaton movie years ago and decided that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, uh, uh, so, uh, we're, 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 happy with those send offs. We're, we're, we're at peace with Iron Man and Captain America, uh, yeah. being gone because part of me thinks like, man, I know those actors have whatever they want to do and whether that they want to be, I think Robert Downey Jr. Seemed a lot more comfortable being defined by, uh, Tony Stark than, uh, Chris Evans was being defined by Steve Rogers and Captain America. But, uh, Man, if they announced another Iron Man movie and another Captain America movie tomorrow with those guys in it, I'd be super pumped to go see it. Like, and, and also, like, get, give them ten or fifteen years to to cool off and do their indie films or whatever, and then we could get some version of Old Man Logan only with Captain Captain America and, and Iron Man. That'd be amazing. Iron Man with a walker. Yeah, I'd be so <laughs> in on that. Uh, I I enjoyed going back earlier. I enjoyed the the. The Steve Rogers, Steve Rogers fight, you know, the Steve Rogers five, six years later with the older Steve Rogers swearing and stuff. Yeah. And, and that was that was a great touch because, like, you know, did, did the Gemini Man trailer play before? I saw it in front of mine. Yeah, I didn't. And, I don't know anything about it. No, there were really weird considering this is like the biggest movie of all time. Like the uh, the, the the Alamo played uh, two documentary trailers, one for a a couple that has a farm they just have a farm it's just that we have a farm oh no it's hard to have a farm another one about uh, the first women to sail around the world in a competitive race and i'm like Mm -hmm. like is is this me going to see a a a, a, you know a random indie movie in like 1996 we don't have a new toy story trailer we can show yeah it was like hobbs and shaw and then like the power of women at sea and look we own a farm (laughs) <laughs> that yeah, they had the Gemini Man it, trailer did play in front of mine. Yeah, and it's you know I don't know if you're familiar with the plot. It's you know <laughs> you watch the plot like I think I watch the, the the trailer like I think I got the movie. They, like, I think you gave me the whole movie. You know, like this assassin trying to kill me matches every single move. He's too good. It's like you know it's because he's you. He's a clone or you're the clone of him. And it's like mm-hmm. oh. I guess they're going to meet up. Oh, now they just met up. You know, like now we got to figure out what's going on. Like, all right, we're going to figure out what's going on. Like we figure out it's this guy who did it. Like, okay. Like, I'm sure there's more to it, but I'm like, yeah, I think I got the movie. Okay. Well, <laughs> so it, I was like, I felt like it's, it's worth noting that, wow. uh, uh, by the way, you know, you know who wrote Gemini man? Uh, well, there are like three writers. Benioff was one of the writers. Okay. Is that, we'll take that as a so, yes. yes. I do uh, know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Well, I'm saying it's like the show. <laughs> the well, uh, my point is, my point is just as you go, like, well, he's one of three. I don't know that he write the version I, we saw. I know, but that can come after I say, oh, isn't it funny? The yeah, game of the guy, and then you can you say, de- well, you, you know, what's more interesting is that he's one of three writers. You were definitely my, given an option to alley oop, well, instead the you stuffed I cut him. Cut that short as often we go. Oh, so and so wrote this, like. No, they wrote part of it. We don't know who wrote it. And I, I know, I'm trying to stop out this madness, Justin. I'm Good. trying to stop it out. Yeah, this. Justin, stop the madness. And if we have to God stop the damn. flow of the show to do it, so be it. But no. you guys can keep the flow of money coming to us if you head on over to patreon.com <laughs> slash weird things. If you enjoy our conversations, just a buck an episode. That's all we're asking for, man. You get your own RSS feed, uh, and, and you make us uh, feel proud to keep on showing up every single week in your feed. Uh, can I say one last Endgame thing? Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, this I knew that this was a thing going into the movie, and apparently I misread it in the movie and liked it because I misread it. Um, apparently, uh, I don't remember which Russo brother it is, but portraying, quote, grieving man in the counseling session as the, like, 
a gay yeah. character. Yeah. I uh, I definitely thought that was supposed to be Hulk because that it did look it did look a, l- a little like Mark similar Ruffalo. To, yeah, and it, but, uh, but so that's why I was like, why would you cast somebody who, who looks, looks that close like to Mark Ruffalo? Right. I, so so that was one of the directors. That was one of the Russos, right? Oh, that's great. Uh, uh, I I liked it better thinking it was Hulk. Uh, I did too. That it was I, I, character I, development instead of just like unnamed random. I I I I, I don't know. It, I, it, I totally I, wouldn't I, have minded. I, I think I think that, that no. I throw that in the same bucket uh, with Andrew's complaints about the world building of the five years later thing, where there was just a lot of random haphazard stuff just kind of thrown out there because mm-hmm. ultimately this isn't the leftovers this is a time travel movie i yeah. yeah when that and i knew it was i knew like oh one of the russo brothers is playing a part and he's like doing this scene that's a very pointed scene it's kind of a little little uh kevin smithy kind of uh you know it's a little little, little all right, you know. It's a little, like, kind of they make, the morning makes you mal- and I, like, well, this is a little let, awkward thing to put in here. Luck, luckily for me, none of it read is really awkward. I was really, I was really buying into the grief and, and that moment. And, um, the, uh, 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 oh, uh, uh, we didn't even talk about it. Uh, well, especially, just, just one, one more moment on that is that I, I did appreciate the symbolism of, uh, you know, now he's running the grief counseling session, like Falcon Captain. was running it during mm-hmm. the war. Uh, but now it's for now everybody's been through the war, and so he's, you know, taking anybody who wants to come and talk about it. So I also, was- Professor Hulk, uh, I lit up like a goddamn Christmas tree uh, the second I saw him, and and that interaction, like that that moment, like how everyone at this table has lived that moment where somebody is a fan of one of us, and we're next to one of our friends, and, and he has to explain, and, 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 and oh my god, that awkward interaction was. Amazing. Not to mention, Captain America's right there. <laughs> yeah. He's not even involved in... I don't know. Oh Maybe he's got a secret identity still. <laughs> I, I love they did that. It was a little spoiled, though, because I went from, I was going for my walk, and I'm walking along, and I see an Avengers poster out of the corner of my eye, mm-hmm. and I see more Ruffalo-looking Hulk wearing one of those time travel suits. You know, in the poster, I'm like... Oh, like how do you get the? Oh, oh, you, <laughs> look away, you, look you, away, you, look away, look uh, yeah, away. Yeah, you, you're like uh, it doesn't seem like Hulk's the type to put on clothing at all. Why, why would he do that? Oh, wait, Professor Hulk. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want to go back. One more thing that I'm going to go, uh, uh, Mister Not Get It though about Jim and I, man. Go read the Wikipedia about the development of that movie. It's amazing because you're talking about something that started 20 years ago. Harrison Ford's going to play this character. The whole history of. Who wrote it? How many different people got attached to the writing of it? Whatever. Funny story. One of the writers in there, I have a friend that worked at the, an office where she found a million dollar check to this guy sitting in a drawer. Whoa. <laughs> he forgotten about. Oh my gosh. And so <laughs> that was kind of like my reaction. Like, you know, who wrote it? I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, Justin. And you did. <laughs> <laughs> did. Whooping in movie theaters, the motions. The uh, any any last yeah, thoughts? I, I think that's yeah. I thought it was gonna look terrible when Ant Man went up Thanos' butthole and expanded. <laughs> it, it was really artfully done. I thought Ave Maria was a great soundtrack choice. Oh, I was actually really thrilled to see Squidward back. I think he's a very credible, fun villain, and I'm glad he uh, was a better. Uh, he, he was a more uh, badder ass guy this time. Uh, uh, oh, the, the, it, he was—he was the one the, of the, the thralls of, of Thanos. Oh, okay. Yeah. He was uh, cool in the. I liked Infinity War because, like, like I know I, I, I wanted more of them, and I was happy to get more of them. Yeah, uh, I, like what I, one of the things I loved about Infinity War is like, you know, other than like mainly like dealing with like like the, you know the freaking Chitari morons and stuff like this. You know, we we had like, hey, yeah, you guys are superheroes on Earth because you're special. We're gonna bring in people who are special from their planets and stuff, and you're gonna find out. You're not so special. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, good, good movie. It, uh, I enjoyed watching it. Yeah. Do do that again. Keep doing that. Wow. Uh, one universal that, that mega was, that corporation. That was one thing that I did. I did come out it, that it was such a finale. It was such a empty the drawer. We're doing everything. We're yeah. We're even gonna, we're going to introduce like kind of a broken idea like time travel, which will now kind of hang over every element of, uh, you know, every other story in that universe going forward, uh, that it, it did feel to me like, man, like, 
that is, it's kind of a risk in that, like, I, I think I'm good, like, on Marvel. Like, yeah, you know, that's, that's what's bringing up, like, that next slate. There's nothing there that's making me go, I mean, again, we're going to see all of them. Who are we kidding? But I'm not excited. You know, I'm not like, oh, I can't wait for blank. I'm like, eh, you know, let me but, let's but see. But on, on, on the other hand, for them, they're like, no, we're going to make you fall in love all over again. And we're going to wipe the, We need to wipe the slate clean a little bit so we can introduce these new elements. And, uh, you know, I, I look forward to uh, giving them that chance because they certainly earned it over 10 years. Yeah. I guess it's like some of the characters that we they're bringing they're doing sequel store stuff the characters that I I'm not in love with now, <laughs> you know I'm like hey, I'm all right yeah cool all right cool yeah but yeah. but but they were uh, that's that's been the case as they continue to bring in new characters I was not in love with Daredevil until I started watching Daredevil and then I was like Daredevil's pretty great or even no. Thor which took you know uh, three uh, movies <laughs> well and a deliberate you know change of of direction in character right that was uh, a, a thing that didn't just happen right it was it was yeah but i but i like i I see where andrew's coming from in that like you know uh uh, black panther although tremendously popular was you know had had some flaws in in uh, to me the movie was flawed i really still like the character i'm I'm excited to see that move uh another another adventure he's boring he's boring Uh, okay, he's so, very nice man. He's a very Andrew, nice man. That one. Yeah, but I guess that's that. That is my larger point, and uh, you know, uh, my 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 absent public opinion about Captain Marvel. I look forward to one day having an opinion on Captain Marvel, and therefore how excited I would be to see a Captain Marvel too. Yeah. Although it'd be great if in the first fifteen minutes she was like, "We're I'm I'm out of here." <laughs> I, it was a great great reason. Like, hey, uh, uh, the Earth has Avengers. Other places don't have the Avengers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's still instant defense it's like uh you know, i'm joyless and obsessed with how powerful i am it's me the 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 the, the oh, yeah, yeah, never mind never mind it's a great movie guys hey I, I i did watch the first episode of what we do in the shadows did you guys see that oh i haven't seen that the series yet no. it's great no it's great. They, uh, can, can I? Uh, uh, this is told in the first two minutes but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Un- cool unlike the movie um they add a new type of vampire. It is an energy vampire. Oh, yeah. I heard about this. It was a, an actual vampire, but he does it just by cornering you <laughs> and telling you <laughs> dumb, boring stories. <laughs> and so none of them want to be around. It's 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 fun. That's hilarious. I think I've been that guy. <laughs> uh, um, cool. What do we want to talk about Game of Thrones? Where do you want we... to get into the next episode? Yeah. Maybe we'll break it out. Two episodes. Although, although I guess uh, if we're doing a timely we'd thing, to, no, we'd have to, we'd have to release Game of Thrones now. Yeah, and, and then hold and, off on Endgame. So we, we'll yeah. pack it in then, and then we'll do a, a a regular episode. I think this is gonna be great. What are we Pro- doing? Production meeting. Uh, we were we were briefly flirting with the idea of breaking these into one each, but then we right. realized that doesn't solve the problem of needing to release well, one a week I, from now. I would say that the long night was such uh, a epic episode that even if you listen to us talk about it next week it's not like well i would th- i mean I next think week when there's already another it's... game of thrones episode out yeah i'm saying I, that I... if we do if we release this episode today mm-hmm. or oh how far out are we going to do the bank it for yeah uh, i got it right our, our banked episodes won't come out for another two plus weeks or unless we do the next episode gets banked to the future. And just the next <laughs> we, we just start doing one. Let's go back in time and we gather all the points. We've had. Uh, let's talk about, let's do you want to do, want to do, what do you want to do? Uh, I, we're not going to spend a whole hour talking about game of Thrones, right? This will be a much shorter. I, I, discussion. I, I, fool. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm on team Bryce here. I, I, I let's, let me put it this way. I would prefer we not spend a whole hour talking okay. about game of Thrones. Let's, let's just power through. Let's set up, Let's we'll cut all that all that decision making stuff out, and we'll just let's just roll into uh, transitioning. And check out our new podcast, guys. Decision things, <laughs> decision gates. Uh, hey, here's a, a gateway to hell called uh, the the Battle of Winterfell, folks. It was the long night last night. Everybody was tired of all the talking, tired of all the 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 the, the, the table setting. Well. We finally got some action. The long rumored longest battle in recorded history took 55 days 
to film out there in Ireland. Uh, uh, they, they were very cognizant of saying that it was going to be longer than the Helm's Deep battle of the two towers. What did we think? Uh, very dark. It was good. I, actually, I adored that about it. Um, I think the whole conceit of being able to convey epic sweeping battles just by lights winking out and the fact that that landed like you felt uh, mm -hmm. uh, like I just got goosebumps remembering that moment. Uh, that, uh, that was great. Um, bit weird that uh, the red woman just showed up like, hey, I'm back. What's up? Let's go. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. The 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 constant teasing of uh, am I about to die? Oh, I got overrun, but I, it's not really clear. And then uh, really not any significant characters dying felt like. Okay, I, this is my this is my question because I got a back and forth with uh, Teasdale about this today. Where it's like <laughs> this is this is like a thing where people are like, not enough main characters died, yeah. which I don't get fundamentally. Uh, uh, I, I don't that, that that is just something that I'm not looking for, and I'm specifically not upset that we're taking possibilities of things that could happen off the table in the next three episodes. We still have three episodes to go. I, I will say this. Um, I really had the expectation that the overall story of this epic was going to be that we would increasingly realize how dumb it is to squabble over a throne in the face of an existential threat and that the existential threat of the Night King would be the main thing. Um, I don't know what we do for the next three episodes with no existential threat. And now we're back. To, it feels so small to defeat Cersei. Like, like, I, I well, I, it'll I, be I, challenging because most of the forces of Winterfell did die. Sure. But I feel like, well, good. At least there's humans in charge. Uh, we, we did it. We, we, we stopped uh, uh, the Hantavirus from taking over the planet. Uh, mm -hmm. I, 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 it feels like all the stakes after this are much, much smaller. I, I hear you, but I'm I'm not going to worry about, well, how are they going to solve this setup until I see how they solve the setup? Right. Because next My, episode is all is not even going to be the bat. I'm, I don't know this, but I, I mean, next week they're not going to be at King's Landing. They're going to be talking about setting up all of the stakes of why Cersei cannot be in charge of the Seven Kingdoms. Maybe, maybe, but I'm saying, like, let's not judge this by what we think they're going to do. I'm, I, I mean, you can. You judge how, I'm saying, for me personally, I'm like, I get all, everything you said, I'm like, yeah, but I'm like, They've always surprised me. They've always surprised and delighted me. I I was in love with this episode. Like, what other people felt about Endgame is what I felt about this. Like, I was just over the moon on this thing. I just was just like, I was like, I was delighted every single moment. It flowed fast. I want to watch it again. And, and it was like, I, it, it was just, you know, for me, I was fantastic. I said, you know, if the series ended on this episode, I mean, you know, I'd be a little bit like, oh, more, but I'm like, what? What a great capstone! What a effing great capstone to to an epic series. Like I, every other epic series we've seen just sort of kind of goes meh and sort of ends in a mad way. Holy cow! I loved it. I was, uh, uh, yeah, I was I was over the moon. Uh, but I do think there's something got something was weird about the the, the darkness element because some people and even people that were posting like pictures and gifs online, like you could barely see some of the scenes that I could see fairly clearly on my television. So I don't know whether or not it was some kind of setting thing that, that, well, that triggered some people. But like, I know for some folks, like it was like barely visible uh, uh, in, a, in a way that it was not on my television. So I don't know what that deal was. Well, and, and some of that was um, like rebroadcasters of HBO were doing something to the signal on their end. So like I've, I, the image that I saw was, uh, you know, a, a uh, you know someone had taken a frame from just the HBO Now stream and brightened it, and then took the same screen from the Foxtel uh, over the air stream and tried to brighten it, and just what well, something Foxtel had done lost all of that dark information. Huh. Um, and so depending on how you were seeing it, and if your TV is set up to be you know ultra high contrast or super super dark than it should be, then yeah, you, there's a lot of that you just would not see. I watched it sitting where you're sitting right now, Bryce, mm -hmm. on both the, those monitors at once, and uh -huh. it, it was very significant, the difference. So so I don't know how yeah. much of it, like, like I ended up um, with my eyes mainly on the, the closer one, which doesn't right. have as good better color depth range. or whatever. Uh, well, but yeah, but it was just, you know, brighter and clearer. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That, I, that, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, please. Uh, th that being said, I... It, it was everything that I really wanted, down to the idea that I was very much a believer that 
there's going to be some chicanery with with the Night King, and the Night King was going to skip, you know, uh, uh, Winterfell and uh, uh, you know head down to King's Landing, and we were going to have a a big confluence there, and then. You know, they they ratcheted the stakes up and up and up and up and up and up and up. And and eventually it got to the point where you're like, okay, no, someone's going to have to kill the Night King like right now. Uh, uh, Otherwise, the the show's over. And Mm -hmm. then, you know, you have the big uh, hero moment. But uh, this was to me everything that I that I would want with Game of Thrones. And that's uh, that's why the, the. the the thing that puzzles me is 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 the like no if more main characters would have died I would have liked it better. But I think like the the past seven seasons of Game of Thrones have told me to stop expecting a happy ending or a good ending to expect people to lose. Like that was after we talked about about last week's episode on spoiler in time. Uh, uh, my I walked away from that conversation going oh yeah they're gonna lose next week right. and it's going to be. Either because, Cersei against the the White Walkers or Cersei like they like I wasn't expecting the good guys to win. I can't keep expecting what, the good guys to but, win. In this especially series. when they spent not one but two episodes doing nothing but between the lines saying enjoy them while you can. And I'm like mm. get it like after that second episode like sure. that rubber band was pulled way far back and I was like I am now steeled to lose everyone. So uh, but, but, uh, but I would but, argue but they, they, they've done that episode four times. They've done they've done the like we're all gonna die here episode four. times times and, and, and also they, i think that, that, that every- by doing that that episode we had last week which was like hey yeah we're gonna spend some we're like oh it's gonna be our last hours of these times you're like you're ready to like so it's a surprise who dies and who doesn't and it's kind of a surprise to see oh wow more people survived than i thought because we expected sure. them to who, do this thing and who was it that was calling so. way in advance i feel like it was one of you three that called way early on, like, why are you gathering in the crypt? What? That seems like a very bad place to hide for safety when you oh, have sorry. somebody who raises the it, dead. It, it wasn't me. It literally watching that moment when they start breaking. I'm like, oh, that was a bad idea. I had a friend that was like, yeah, why are they? I didn't say that. I'm like, I was delightfully surprised. Oh, that's it. well, that, that's that's great. It might have been I, Tom. I, I yeah, I I forget who it was, but but definitely that was a moment I was waiting for. I mean, they made a big deal over who's going to be in the crypt. And then no, like uh, the three important people in the crypt, none of them died either. Uh, I'll, t- I'll tell you what, man. Uh, I am now full on cheering for uh, uh, Team uh, Tyriansa. Like uh, I wanted to see them on the oh, Iron yeah. Throne, I, I, especially since it's like my favorite elements of the episode before were realizing like, oh no, wait, like let's assume that there's going to be a tremendous amount of damage done, if not open rebellion uh, and civil war. Like, like at, at the very least, considering where we are left with these characters, we now have enough of an army and enough firepower to cause problems, and yet statistically probably not enough to, like, storm King's Landing. So now the question becomes, all right, well, how do these alliances go? Because, like, even up to the uh, point where she's, like, facing death, Sansa's like, yeah, like, I'm not on this team. Like, <laughs> I, I like you, dog, but I, I don't know if I, like, like you, like you, if it means giving up my uh, scotland yeah you know uh, that's like with with her you know we had the first episode or two episodes everybody telling us that she's the smartest person in westeros we, we haven't seen her done anything yet which means that we're setting her up to be the smartest person in westeros so you know she's not gonna die there you know like she's not gonna die we've you know her 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 big part of her story is the next couple of mo- next couple episodes so yeah. yes I think they correctly hinted that, you know, kill the Night King and uh, everything, you know, the dead stop. Um, Did they have to represent what that looks like by exactly reenacting the end of the Phantom Menace? Like, like it was, it was exactly the end of the Phantom Menace where they, they blow up the spaceship and all of the Roger Roger robots just tumble down. Um, Even though they had been giving all signs of being autonomous, semi-autonomous thinking beings up until that moment. But then they all just collapse like marionettes. Well, that's what we, we saw that happen before when they killed whichever guy, whichever one of the White Walkers was in charge. Oh, one of the generals. Yeah, yeah. we've seen that before with the well, with them. So, with the, with the, what's that? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. So I guess, I guess there's hierarchy that goes down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I guess I can see that. Just visually, were, it definitely, I was like, oh, this is the ending of The Phantom Menace. Because they were definitely well, being controlled. I mean, think of that, the last scene at, you know, right in front of Bran and, and 
the the night king's there and all the forces have stopped instead of like all going after to kill the kid that they're there to capture you right know? right there's there's got to be some controls elements to yeah that. we well, saw that but well, we saw that because yeah, yeah. because he, he pushes them forward from the dragon and they start falling on the flame on the fire yeah. Oh, yeah yeah and, and we saw way back like john whatever when he slid he killed one of the generals back and then all the ones that he was controlling shattered mm -hmm. and so we learned that was a thing that you do if you kill the one that made them then you can well and also it was it was in all the table setting of the episode before one of you know the biggest part of the table as they were all sitting around the thing was like all right we have no way of stopping this army uh the only way to do it is to kill the night king and that's why we need to draw him out to where bran is in the godswood that was like mm -hmm. the stated plan Did and cersei goes off script daenerys. When, daenerys yeah sorry yeah no daenerys goes off script when she sees the Kalisar go down because now she's like no now i need to provide suppressive fire instead of holding back both dragons to both attack the night king at the same time the uh, uh did was it established why the night king was so had such a crush on bran bran's magic He's well, the connection to magic. I, I understand that, uh, but it's like what, uh, in, in 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 Bran's words during that same scene, uh, he says, uh, the, "The Night King wants to keep the world in eternal darkness, and the the Three Eyed Raven is the world's memory. Like, so if you kill the memory, if you kill all the idea of how to rebuild and how to uh, move forward, then." he owns the world basically and, and, and i think what, it, it what, doesn't help that brand never finished his training and so he clearly can do st could do stuff but he does isn't able to did, what, what did he accomplish by going into a bunch of ravens and flying around for a bit so <laughs> there's theories but uh there's some interesting theories actually on on uh what he is doing there but i assume that that will be something that that will be explained it didn't just enter spectator mode and ostensibly speaking was he needed to find out where the you know how far out was the guy what was going on it was it was you know that his brand's way of knowing what's the state of the battle how much time do we have how do we do this so he can go out there and go see oh i see him i see where it is and whatever and, and i don't you know we're making assumptions here that that the story of the night king and all that's completely done that we're, it's all over all the evil magic in the world is gone yeah yeah, and and it also did seem like he was able to see at least into the relatively short future mm -hmm. to see Theon's death and possibly Arya's turnaround. Mm -hmm. Well, and remember, the dagger has been a part of this show since the very beginning. That that's mm -hmm. the dagger that uh, uh, Littlefinger has. That's the the, the dagger that uh, attacks Bran when he's uh, first laid up in in season one. It's been bouncing around this this uh, world for a, a very long time with the idea being that you know, somebody who we've already seen once go back into the past to control the future, uh, you know, that, that it's no coincidence that he's the one who hands that dagger off to Arya last season. Uh, and then we see Arya using it, using that exact same move sparring with Brienne, uh, you know, in, in last season as well. So it's like, that's the one thing that, that I love about Game of Thrones, and to me is always more of a draw than the unexpected nature, the, the, the adrenaline hit of whether or not a character I like or don't like dies, is that, like, they usually do their homework. They usually have things laid out, and uh, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, if I read a great justification of, like, all of the religious prophecies uh, basically did their own little Avengers superhero team up between the Drowned God, the Lord of Light, the Seven, the Old Gods. Every one of them played a part in bringing together the Faceless Men. All all worked in concert from uh, Theon having his moment to uh, Bran bringing everybody into the Godswood to Arya being the one who eventually does it. Uh, uh, this was very much uh, uh, in, in tribute to all of the prophecies and lore that we've kind of come to love with uh game of thrones yeah this uh in a similar vein to uh not spoilers here if you're worried listeners uh, uh our discussion of endgame uh my only worry is as we stick the landing on the hbo version of the show i don't know that i'll finish the books i don't know why i would finish the books well i mean yeah. I, I my 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 excitement about the books has more to do with how the last one was written <laughs> uh than it does about uh, anything that we'll find out here I, I i still will enjoy george r r martin's writing 
Uh, I hope he goes in slightly different directions. There's obviously a lot more, uh, you know, balls up in the air for, uh, you know, the the Song of Ice and Fire series than there is in Game of Thrones. But and in general, I don't know. They're 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 two they're two different things for me. And like, he said I, that they've had to cut a lot of enough stuff out of the books that it seems like you would still find enough extra stuff and ancillary stuff in those books. But I haven't read any of them, so. Although I do, I do suspect that the big beats will be like I, I would be shocked if Arya is not the one who kills the Night King or or mm-hmm. stops the Long Night in the books. Considering they made a very big point of saying, uh, "Oh, it's been three years since we've known that Arya is the person who kills the Night King," and three years ago was the point that uh, you know the the show was definitely lapping the books, and they apparently had their little powwow with George R. R. Martin to be like, "All right." Give up, give give up the big deets so we can uh, so we can move forward. I, I like the idea that he sat down like, well, what happens at the end is the Night King has his hands around Bran's throat, and then a soldier we'd never seen before, but always been in the background, a heavy set man, lunges forward with a dagger and plunges <laughs> into his heart and rips it off, and he's got a black beret cap on. Cappy's in a beard. His name, what's this guy? What's his name? Uh, Georges uh, <laughs> Martinez. Yeah. yeah. George Martinez. Yeah, he's an important oh. character, by the way. <laughs> you know what's funny? a backstory on him. Uh, until yeah, you like, made of, it. Of House Secaucus. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 until you made that uh, uh, a joke about George R. R. Martin writing himself into it, like, I totally believe that that's the kind of thing he would do in the book, is make it an insignificant totally character that and, and not have any of that uh, on, on the nose poetry that we that we love in our television. Who knows? Uh, Who I did. I, I love the uh, creeping around scene with Arya. Uh, the, the dead silence. They, like they, I, you could not even hear her palms and feet on the ground. Like like that was that was some cool Foley decision. Work. I missed the connection from her out in the battlefield. It did. It and, was like she tele- teleported then, yes. from being out there, and, and then, then suddenly, suddenly she was solid snake. Now I'm scared. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're like now I'm badass. Again. But it was it was cool. It was, it was cool well, seeing her I finally agree. be solid snake and not just like there was, disappear. There, there was a moment, and it was it was subtle. Was when she was gets she's by, running from them because she sits down and she bashes her head, and so she's got the gash, and that's why she's she's disoriented. And she saw oh. like some framed points of view of her where things are sort of fuzzy for her. Right, and, and then we uh, uh, it was sort of a, a mirror image of the hound, you know, uh, being too scared to go out in the fire until he sees yeah. Arya, and then and then you know then it you know his oh, his affection overwhelms him yeah and dropped... what they did with her it was kind of Captain Marvel they had to weaken her they had to yeah. make her less powerful because she's so mm. badass they said we'll give her a big head injury so now she's a little disoriented and stuff and yeah yeah but but meanwhile Brian you were were dead on to point out the foley work because now we have a real world explanation that she is that quiet mm-hmm. right and and, and her, her the, the drops of blood from her head make more sounds than her feet Right. Uh, and that plays into our our big moment like that. That builds up our, our justification for why she's able to sneak by all the White Walkers and, uh, uh, you know, come and swing in like a wrecking ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, cool. was there anyone, uh, did, we didn't see much of um, I feel like we did not see much of Brienne or Jorah or Jamie really. I feel, I feel like it was a very stark heavy thing by the end of the I feel like we saw film. a lot of Jorah very slowly dying. Oh, uh, <laughs> Jorah they, 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 as he lived in the friend zone. They <laughs> just, they, you're like a brother to me. Oh, no, sorry, not a uh, not not Jorah, the the wildling who has the hots for Brienne. I oh, I'm thinking oh, that love oh, triangle Torment. at Torment. Yeah. And that that kind of didn't really play out in a way that you really think it would have played out stronger in the battlefield. Well, part of it is is that and if you watch the behind the scenes where they they talk about the episode, one of the things they point out is they say, Hey, battles are cool, really, really long battles get boring. And, you know, in those scenes, every time you cut back to Jamie or you know, Brianna, they're like, ah, 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 ah. And it's like, okay, you know, like, and that was like, they had to say, like, if we keep, you know, we could, we, we could show you more, the, you know, the sure. hour long version with them. It's just, ah, ah, <laughs> stabbing. Well, I mean, stabbing, by the way. That's the, that's uh, what we're doing but yeah, no, I, I think that's, and that's what they did very effectively. And going back to uh, uh, the, the, Two Towers sequence, what what they did very effectively as well was, A, always showing a different phase of the battle, 
that the battle begins out front and then there's the retreat and then there's the siege defense and then the, the walls are broken and you keep kind of like contracting that circle closer and closer. And this show, th this episode did, a, 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 in my mind, a masterful job of then making it, uh, okay, well, the closer you get in to Winterfell, the more claustrophobic it is because now there are these eerily quiet moments that you can have and, and you get the Arya stuff and you get the Hound stuff. You get the the little moment with uh, Melisandre and uh, after uh, Beric Dondarrion dies, like there's there's all these uh, other little uh, gear shifts you can do, uh, and then not to mention the the aerial dragon kind of stuff. They were always able to kind of hit another thing, so it didn't just become hack and slash for for you know uh, an, an hour and a half. I'd like them there to be like a cousin Todd Stark or whatever that like after everything kind of goes like, hey, guys, why didn't we do two rings of fire? You know, we would have saved. Shut up, Todd. You know, he's <laughs> kind of like, hey, guys, <laughs> you know, I was thinking about we could have just put everybody inside of the castle first. No, shut up, Todd. <laughs> and he's like, and now, now that I'm thinking about it, why do we just have our dragons sitting around waiting? It seems like, you know, they could be harrying and, and burning lots shut of up, bodies. Shut up, Todd. Like, oh, okay, why right. did we let all the Dothraki and the Unsullied kind of just die for no reason? <laughs> Shut up, Todd. Oh, well, just, yeah, yeah, the Unsullied made sense, and I guess in the in the in in, in the lore of that world, because by the way, I, I like went forty five minutes deep in people getting very uh, tactician-y of like why the uh, defense plan of Winterfell was not what it should be, and like arguing about well, obviously the trebuchet should have been up front, and then we should have went with a four three four, uh, you know. Uh, but uh, I guess in that world. You know they are they are the Dothraki screamers. They are not defensive fighters. They are offensive raiders, and that is that is what they do. They don't stand still on horses. They scream ahead on horses. Although I'm with you, Brian. That was like I knew that that episode was going to be dope as soon as they just did the like literal the greatest Kalasar ever assembled in history. We spent so much time talking about the whole concept of Daenerys's like uh, military might is built on the fact that she could assemble the largest Kalasar and she got it across uh, the sea. And now they are unstoppable psych. <laughs> and, and I, I, and I loved that, you know, that, that moment where it was brilliant with the lights going, there are so many things they did. I thought were so, you could tell they thought them through very deeply. Like the moment when those lights go out and you don't see it, like not showing them the, the monsters was great. And also it's like, this is a flood. This is not an army. This is just a flood coming towards you. And and that was beautiful because it was like that was the realization of like this is this is a sea of dead bodies coming at us. You yeah. know. Mm -hmm. And that was and then the other there were little subtleties too, like when they're in the in the wood and, and they look up and Theon sees you could see the like, oh, they lit the fires because you would see the glow from the haze and it's a great writer note it's a great thing for a writer to realize oh you would see this and it's hard on the page to think about you know visual like oh i would they would know because they would see the haze the light come over and a lot of great moments like that mm -hmm. oh, so yeah good i give it a thumbs up yeah. <laughs> you should watch it by the way, one of the writers of David Benioff, he's uh, written a movie that's coming out. <laughs> sorry, I, sorry, you, 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 well, now, Andrew, yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. those oh, written Andrew, by no, credits are... very interesting. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be one of the Star Wars movies. Um, I'm looking forward to it. That's fascinating. More information metered out bit by bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we get we, we got to bank another one of these. Yeah, we do. Yep. To record some more. All right, you guys any listen, picks? Though? Picks? Uh, yes, Game of Thrones and Endgame. Yeah, everything that we there just... We <laughs> cool. All right, it's been weird. Boom. Cool. All right, quick break. Uh, yeah. Just FYI, uh, about 20 minutes into the next episode that we're doing, uh, I'll have to duck out momentarily, so mm -hmm. if, if it's clear that I'm not there, I'm not quitting. I just have to yeah. get the kids. We know. We know, we know. All righty, well, let's uh, put a little... Little tunes on. Hey, Justin. Yo. How's it going? Uh, man. So we are, um, we're really, we're, we're rocking and rolling as soon as I get into town, huh? Well, I guess, no, tomorrow no. we don't really have a lot on, right. on the, right? It's, we're, it's uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, it's Wednesday and Thursday. And those are PM things. 
Yeah. So. So I'll, I'll be able to knock out everything else that I'm doing. Yeah. What, what else are you doing? Are you pre-banking uh, stuff? Are you doing live streams? Uh, I, I, I've, I've told everybody that I'm uh, not going to um, live stream, but, uh, but I definitely I have all my, my road recording equipment, so I can kind of do it from anywhere. Oh, so you'll just do offline recordings? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's that's kind of been the been the move lately. Um, you know, the, yeah. the the focus has been a lot more on um, a lot more on just the audio versions. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. Yeah, that's where most people uh, listen to it. Right. Um, but yeah, it'll be. Uh... Uh, it, it'll be uh, it'll be my own little mini vacation those two weeks you're gone because yeah right two of the three shows for those uh, two of those three podcasts of the week and I ain't got to come out. out yeah so uh, yeah that is I think that's a, that's a cool uh, idea maybe we should even even beyond kind of like uh, big events I mean like for this thing it's it's kind of hard because Andrew and I will both be out of the country at the same uh, time yeah same time but um yeah we should get in the habit every, of every once in a while it, it's 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 cool to just like hey we'll we'll put some effort forward and then have a couple weeks off yeah we'll bank some stuff um but yeah that'll be uh, it'll be a good week it'll be a fun week it'll be a little crazy for me because i'll also have to get a scamnation video done at some point but yeah whatever i can <laughs> That's all. It'll be whatever. But uh, yeah, we, we just did two weeks of um, videos with uh, 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 James Grime from Number File, and so. Oh yeah, I was watching uh, uh, one of them. I like the the you guys did like a more like podcasty interviewee style. Yeah, and so. and that was I I like that. I think it being the biggest trouble in production for that was <clears throat> it just being long. Not necessarily that it was information heavy just the actual length of it was was yeah there was a lot of great like stories between them and, mm -hmm. and the production was really good uh but uh yeah it, it, that definitely seemed like another kind of like uh like oh let's let's test and see how much people want kind of just interview stuff yeah and uh it seems like it's going over well so you know that's a pretty easy type of thing that that we can do and with with people in town and stuff so uh yeah but then uh and we shot we, we went and shot some stuff last week for scam nation a bunch of riddle and puzzles sort of things mostly riddles yeah um uh but we had we had a, we had a real smart guy in uh in in the uh in who who came out and so he he knew some of them he kind of knocked some of those out pretty quick so we'll see oh wait wait uh really yeah and and some of it was just like a little tricky stuff of just like, um, uh, like oh you you're on your way to a tournament and you meet uh, you meet these knights and there are six knights and each knight has two squires and each squire is pulling two horses and each horse is carrying uh, another type of person. How many people are going to the tournament? And it's like, God. you know. Well, I mean, but that that's probably you could even do a funny one. It's just like, you know, a guy owns Brian Brushwood, right? Well, like, yeah. So there'll be I, I think what because we had like three really of those short ones that he kind of knocked out. So I think we might put two of them together. And then one of them, because it's it was like literally uh, a couple of minutes. We're talking about the uh, the riddle stuff from oh, uh, last week. Yeah. Of uh, uh, <laughs> just doing it as a very like short thing and then just putting like 10 minutes of a night attack episode in it. Just oh, so really? It's, yeah. Just so it's long <laughs> enough. Like 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 it ends uh, at, at 90 seconds. They're like, well, we can't have a 90 second video. Everybody will know <laughs> that, it, that it doesn't work. So yeah. anyway, I do a podcast. It's called Night Attack. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, all right. Here. Uh, I'll be right back. Yeah, go for it. I'm reading, I'm looking at some more of this stuff, some examples of the people who were trying to watch The Long Night, you know, the, the Game of Thrones episode and, and how it appeared. And mm -hmm. I feel really bad. I mean, for, yeah. for you know, people like who I, just, you know, 
Because like I've adjusted my TV for like from like past Game of Thrones and other stuff for a little more. I've increased the brightness a bit and all that just because you know I don't like that surprise of something being too dark and stuff. But I'm, I'm looking at like people who you know and, and with that compression like. And there's a big difference between if you have like the HBO direct subscription, like with Amazon or iTunes and the quality versus like if you when I used to watch it on demand for my cable provider, it was garbage. It was a oh, yeah. garbage, garbage, yeah, uh, you know, uh, HBO Go and HBO Now used two different uh, streaming services. Uh, one was, I think, BAM powered and then BAM the other is HBO was HBO Now. Yeah. Yeah. And then HBO Go, I think HBO was just rolling themselves. HBO Go or... was was the the garbage one, right? Like uh, HBO at Now least, looks great. At least with both of those, I mean, bandwidth issues aside, those are still getting direct source files from HBO. And you would think that the Amazon ones, or or I guess Roku also does a similar pass through service. You would assume that those did the same thing, but I guess there's nothing to say that those services are aren't also doing something with the signal or compressing them in in a weird way. Yeah, I had I I did the HBO through Amazon and and you know mine was fine. Yeah. Mine was fine. Like again, like I can't I can't not tell you how garbage like the Comcast one yeah, was I, one back when I, still I think I may have bought HBO through Amazon and but I just go to HBO now. Mm -hmm. So it's like I, I think you're getting the HBO now experience if you if you do it through Amazon. Yeah. But well, and you, you can like, watch on the Amazon site. Right. Uh which is could also be a different point of failure. Um, and I, let me just start explain again like that you know, those cable system downloads like oh like I try to watch the opening and it'd be all pixel it was like real you know it was like like <laughs> real know, video <laughs> yeah it was oh it was so horrible and like and went and I'd have to pause it to let it try to buffer but now that I switched it's another reason just just to cut the cord guys just, just to cut it yeah your cable provider does not like you <clears throat> uh -oh, let me see copy and paste to... all right we good uh, actually, give me one more second, please. Great. Well, oh, sorry, I didn't think about having to do this. Okay, alrighty, uh, alrighty. You ready for another weird things? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, take it away. Hello and welcome to Weird Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello, Bryce Castillo. Hi, everybody. That's me, Brian Brushwood. Hello, hello, hello. We could talk about how awesome the penultimate episode of Game of Thrones was, but we're going to hold off on that right now and, and just dive right into some weird things. Sounds good. Sounds good. I'm Sounds good. all about it. Yes. Speaking of, you know, the, the topic of ancient civilizations and really, really deep history is kind of a really cool concept from, you know, Tolkien mythologies and others. And, you know, for the longest time, you think about where people living in uh, the medieval world you know, you'd look and you'd see these ruins of Roman ruins and, you know, you know, what was Londinium and these other places and like, man, these ancients, they had it. You know, we're we're a civilization in decline. And and that's kind of for most of human history. I think that you kind of lived in the shadow of what came before you the great civilizations were the ones before you. You know, if you think about that, how often do you go to you're in the Middle East, you go see the pyramids like we can't build that. I mean, we, we can now. But for most of history, you, you couldn't. And. A topic that came up in interesting, I always love that idea, like, what if something did happen before? What if there was even something beyond that, bigger than that? And I found a cool article. This was from The Atlantic, and it's uh, Adam Frank was actually talking to a uh, physicist, I think, in a climate, a climate, talking about climate science. And they brought up the suggestion, because what they're doing is talking about looking at, like, what are the signatures from pollution in the atmosphere? How do you measure this? And he said... Uh, he mentioned, like, you know, the question says, what was he saying? How do we know that we're the only, the question, how do we know we're the, we're the only time there's been a civilization on our own planet? Okay. Which was this question was posed to him because he made some comment about, like, oh, this is the first time we've ever seen this. And the other guy's like, well, how do we know? How do we know? And neither one of them really believes that, you know, there was some massive, huge civilization before us. But it's not something you should just discount scientifically. You can't just throw out and say, well, of course there wasn't. And they went through kind of an explanation of what would be the signatures of another civilization. And they're talking like, because if you go back like up to two and a half million years ago, you know, everything kind of gets wiped away, you know, on the surface. You have to dig deep down and very few things fossilize. We've talked about this. And, you know, what are the traces they look for? So, okay. So I, I, I suppose we're, we're constructing a scenario 
where imagine a MacGuffin that causes our world scientists to know for a fact that there was a civilization before. Maybe, um, maybe uh, 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 Elon Musk, uh, you know, we, we land on the moon or, or maybe, maybe on the dark side of the moon going around, uh, uh, we, 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 we catch a signature or, or something zaps uh, or, or maybe something's etched into the lunar surface mm-hmm. that it's like the most reasonable uh, uh, estimate was that at some point there was a spacefaring society on Earth that, that put this for posterity and either nuclear war or had chaos or whatever uh, set everything back. What would we look for? Because it would have to be so far back. Well, they give an example of some of the signatures that we were, we're leaving now. Because like, there's the argument like, well, we're in this thing called the Anthropocene. And there's pro and con to that. But you would see one of the big things would be ev- elevated levels of nitrogen because of our use of fertilizers. Right. You know, we have if you have a large global spanning, spanning civilization, you would see in sedimentary levels like, wow, there are these nitrogen spikes that had to be happened from artificial fertilizers, probably plastics. There would probably be layers of some plastics and stuff if they use plastics. Uh, other things they might see is they said even steroids, like there might be some steroid chemicals wow. that you would find there that, you know, there are stuff. So they make some, they make an interesting point of yeah, synthetic steroids or whatever that they could be detectable up to like 10 million years later. Wow. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, what, if, if there was a, a sentient civilization doesn't necessarily have to be humans, right? What era in uh, geologic era would you, would you want to, want to peg that at? You know, I, I want to avoid the bias of one of the things that we, we kind of say that like, oh, we came about when we did because finally brains evolved to the point to have neocortexes and stuff like this. And then that's sort of been the sort of thing like ah, it was harder to have because brains weren't sophisticated enough. But then we get surprised because we discover some animal that is a radical, like, you know, take a squid or an octopus has a radically different brain architecture, does really smart things. And and sometimes we find out these things can develop really fast. So I don't know. I, I, I couldn't tell you because yeah. we've seen like. You know, we had apes for millions of years, and we've been using fire for longer. And then all of a sudden, boom, we're everywhere. I I got to be honest. If we were, um, uh, this is problematic from an energy perspective, but uh, there could be a let's say a squid civilization, mm-hmm. um, and because of the nature of water and decay. Uh, and the lack of bones, which means no fossils uh, or, or very few fossils or fossils in a place that 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 we monkey people uh, wouldn't stumble across. It feels like it would be an undersea civilization. If I was going to place a bet for a for a full on civilization that existed before ours, I think it has to be undersea, right? There, there could, I mean, it could be a multiple thing. And there was a story we talked about a while ago it was a researcher sort of threw out this sort of. Hey, look what I found. And it was fossilized whale bones that appeared to be arranged into like a pattern. And he's like, maybe a squid did this. You know, maybe a really super smart squid did this. And yeah. people are like, nah, it's maybe natural, but it's like, you know, it's not the dumbest thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I could picture hunter gatherer tribes of squids that have symbolic representation and tell stories, you know, mm-hmm. whether it's, you know, squawking at each other or whatever. Like whales do? Yeah. Yeah, man, we got to get us a whale. Can we just buy a whale? Someone look that up. Is that on Amazon Prime? Well, that's actually another topic we'll get into. I think I think I may have this. I have it saved for another episode, but we can get into that too. <laughs> um, but yeah, that so that that is anything. Like, what would you look for? What would you look for in that? And it's it's not. And they 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 talk about the hallmarks that we have of a global civilization, but if it was much more localized, and that's the argument I made. Like we we you could have had. 100,000 years ago, Europe was warmer than it is now. You could have had, and you had apes, you had modern humans, proto-modern humans were on the planet, and you had other species that were like it. You know, you had Denisovians, Neanderthals that had already spread across. You may could have had this Roman-level civilization for a few thousand years, then the, the ice caps expand and flatten everything. So, you know, uh, uh, there, there is a, a kind of a side jag. Uh, th- this, on a very personal level um you know the property 
that we just bought that was formerly a cult compound, formerly a, a nudist colony and all that stuff. And uh, will be all those things again. Indeed. Uh, we, we had somebody, uh, an architect come out who specializes in what he calls uh, living architecture, uh, these kind of core principles. And he does a lot of stuff with uh, Native American communities and all that stuff. He um, uh, uh, is convinced that this area uh, has bones from tens of thousands of years beforehand because it's the beginning of a spring. Uh, it's, it's this, the, uh, a fertile Valley and all that stuff. Um, in a very practical, tangible, concrete sense, I want to know like, like, like what you're proposing. In other words, Andrew is a, a very real problem for me to solve because I don't know how, what evidence to look for. Like, uh, I, I certainly on the property have evidence of, civilization 40 years ago because there's a bunch of cans from the 1970s with ring pulls and church key uh, uh, pop tops on there but I've started to enjoy this sort of amateur trash archaeology to try to figure out like okay of all the crazy people over the last few hundred years uh, why is everything the way it is right now but the idea that that can go back to 10,000 years and uh, the non-zero possibility that this was the home of 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 a, of a tribe uh, due to you know a convenient geography uh i don't know like I, I i i'm very much i would like to subscribe to your newsletter is what i'm trying to say well i and and we mentioned this on a prior show is that i actually have an upcoming book i have a person who has a piece of property not too far from where you are and one of the observations is the fact that that part of texas that area there's deep deep human habitation history there and and it would not be the craziest thing. And you know, one of the one of the reasons that like, and I, I mentioned before when I pull out one of my Neanderthal things, like, man, it's amazing you could find that. It's like, well, it is and it isn't because you know, yeah, Neanderthals were making this in parts of Europe for over half a million years. You know, half a million years to accumulate—that's a lot of flints. That's a lot of things to accumulate. And if your area has been habitable for thousands of years, and you know, there we keep pushing back that edge of North America, like. 24,000 years some people are arguing or more and and I'm I'm I've I've got my my pet could be 100,000 like we we might look in some place I think we may find you know we we t ever told us we told the story before but do you know the story about they found a a Neanderthal like arrow or hand axe or whatever in it was like North Carolina or Mississippi no I don't know anything about this they found this they found this was it clearly was Neanderthal you know Neanderthal style structure Neanderthal whatever and they found this like in Mississippi somewhere in the south whatever like this somebody was you know looking through the geologists looking through the river and they find this thing and it's like it's a big friggin mystery because it's also you know in the riverbed and it's finding that is really if you, even if you had Neanderthals here way back 50,000 60,000 years ago because they figured out a way to get over here whatever finding that just seems so unlikely there was a very rational explanation for how it got there. And um, I, I it, it's not like, and of course we would all figure, no, you have to, you know, the person who found this thing did the research and found out that there had been an explosion of a steamboat there like 80 years before back when we were using steamboats. And steamboats used to use ballast and rocks and stuff. Often you'd get your ballast at the port or whatever because it came over from Europe. Ships had come over from Europe loaded with rocks and stuff that were dug up over there, put into the boat to, to level it out. And then that ballast got put into a steamboat and it was going up the river and it had a boiler explosion. <laughs> oh man. So, so what they perceived as a rando rock happened to be a, 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 an artifact. I, it, it, I guess this is similar to, uh, remember in the late nineties, they were like, Oh, they found microbes on, on Martian meteorites or whatever. And it's like, well, how does a Martian meteorite get to earth? And it's like, well, you, you bang a rock hard enough on Mars, you know, mm -hmm. send a little bit of Mars up into the, uh, into space where it might land on earth. Yeah. And it's, you know, they're, they're, they're now, uh, there was that's kind of a side note, like I think a year ago or last year, two years ago, there was a we, we looked at the data and we found that there was an asteroid that or a meteor that hit the atmosphere. And we don't know if maybe it landed and became a meteorite, but we found we looked at this. And we said that trajectory extraterrestrial. I mean, outside of our solar system. Oh, extra extra solar. Uh, yeah. Extra wow. solar. So we're like, wow, that's really kind of amazing that we know that we've been bombarded by objects that come from entirely different solar systems. Um, Which, you know, well, Superman got here too, but that's side note. <laughs> so, 
So, well, well, so, so, so what, what, what's your pitch? Uh, if, if there is a, a precursor civilization on planet Earth. Do we need to have a way? I mean, should this be a thing that we start? Are, are we, would we, would, would archaeologists notice? Or would we know where to look? I guarantee you that once the idea is out there, we might look at things. We might say, like, you know, <laughs> turns out 65 million years ago, some proto mammals built this iridium reactor that blew up. Up, you know, and then uh, we thought it was a meteor. Turns out, no nuclear. Oh, that's interesting. So, so the the picture making is that uh, oh, what was it? The I want to say K two. Uh, that's that's not it. Uh, but the Yucatan Yucatan uh, yeah, Peninsula the iridium, yeah, uh, uh, iridium blast that wiped out the dinosaurs. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe uh, the problem that. The storytelling. I don't think that was. I just make that clear. No, I agree. I, I but I think that's a that is a fun idea. I guess I guess the only things I could think of is like if they were so advanced they could dig deeper than we're able to dig. But I, I don't really see that. Well, I mean, it might be an interesting thing to say that like asking a question of what would be the science and where like you where you are like you mentioned that location like people like to live where people live. And and there there are probably there are geological things where we go back to a certain point and you know we don't find anything else because like yeah well before then it was covered by ice you know for twenty thousand years but it's like maybe keep digging you know further on down or let's look at the you know using computers to figure out what topography was much further back might reveal a lot of stuff you know we've talked about places like uh, Gobos Tepish which has 20,000 year old stone, carved stone, work stones. It's not conspiracy theory, ancient alien stuff. This is a legitimate scientific, you know, exploration of this place where it predates everything else that we've seen. And we're like, yeah, in this area, yeah, they were carving, you know, 20 ton tones and stuff. Um, and we never, we didn't think that stuff was there until somebody bothered to date it. And like, oh yeah, I guess there might be more of this. It's not like all of a sudden we're like, all right, let's carve rocks. All right. I I, I got one. This is my final answer on if there was a civilization before ours, um, the way early days before the moon, uh, before, before the moon was formed, like, uh, would it be possible that all evidence would be wiped out. Like, uh, uh, the only problem is is the timeline. That's really not enough enough time for a civilization to cook. But but imagine that life developed that it had a similar trajectory to what we just experienced. It was doing something, and then you know this massive thing that just liquefies everything creates the moon. Uh, in 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 all of this before what we perceive as the beginning of life on Earth happened. Is is it? it is that window possible? Uh, I I mean I don't I think Earth probably is still like all boily and stuff. You was know, they're like lava the people. Yeah. What's that? I I, I I didn't know if it was boily at the time. I know we assume I so, know. but I I could see you know a few numbers being off and maybe a society being there. Well, you 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 could go to you could go like I said you could go with some some smaller scale stuff like you could go back a hundred thousand years and like I said because the ice once the ice caps come in and and start flattening stuff you would lose stuff you know depends on what level of technology they reach you could go back you know hundred thousand years and keep going and you could pick points for super advanced civilization you know you go back a couple million years you know we've that entire layer of ground has been just laid over and replaced and you know we have to go to very stable regions in the world to find fossils we go look for fossils is where things haven't changed much over time it's just more dirt's fell on top and that's you know we kind of forget like you know a lot of places we're in like you go down hundreds of feet that soil has been it's new comparatively yeah i guess i guess maybe this is one that we kick out to the the folks at home is uh uh what potential gaps in the record because it seems like all the things we're talking about are are places in what's known about history where the slate appears to have been wiped clean and to ask well, you know what might have been in that gap you know ice cores from antarctica because we can go back a couple million years in some places that would be a good place to look for atmospheric stuff which we do now we, we can pick up like when we were testing nuclear bombs and stuff and things like that really 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 deep ice cores could be an interesting place because you could say, you know, what 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 pollutants, what things got trapped. You know, there's certain, I don't know. Uh, cool, yeah, yeah, I'd love to hear the answers to that. Well, I'll tell you what. You might have a problem with new soil, but you can help us hit pay dirt if you head over 
to patreon.com slash weird things. That's where you can support the show. That's where you can go ahead and get the After Things podcast before. Well, I mean, uh, these couple episodes, I don't know if we're going to have After Things. But eventually, (laughs) I swear, you'll reap the rewards. Just like eventually there'll be another another civilization that will have completely forgotten this one. Folks, patreon.com slash weird things. Gentlemen, you know, we keep pushing back that whole, hey, at least we're safe on this. At least this is safe. And, you know, ironically, an organization that's designed to sort of uh, help protect us from the onslaught of evil AI, which is open AI, keeps scaring the bejesus out of me. (laughs) You know, they had, uh, was it GT2 or whatever, which was their generation for text generation we talked about, which generated entire articles that were very... Uh, Andrew, we all know exactly what you're talking about, but it occurs to me that maybe somebody in the audience might not. Uh, bring us up to speed. So what they did is the OpenAI first, they worked on a thing we talked about in a past episode. They, they developed a system that was able to take like millions of Reddit comments and then generate text where it could generate a complete articles. Like it generated an article about scientists discovering unicorns in South America. Right, and was able to create these entire sort of you know narratives and stuff. They did Lord of the Rings fan fiction, and it wasn't amazing. I mean, it wasn't like if you said a human wrote this, be like, oh, they're, they're a mediocre writer. But you find out a computer completely generated this stuff from just using one sentence. You give it a one sentence prompt, and it makes up the rest. Kind of incredible. And I read through like several hundred examples of this, and it was incredible. And we've we talked about it on a prior episode. You can check it out. Check it out. Well, they've they've applied this, and other researchers have done some of things. They said, "What about music? What if we feed you know millions of songs and stuff to the algorithm, and we give it a first few bars of something? Will it compose a song?" Well, yes, yes, really? it can. So on that same page Bryce was just on, there's actually a thing mentioning the music. So they have an open AI project which is called MuseNet which basically generates four-minute-long musical compositions with ten different instruments, and from styles from Mozart to the Beatles to country music. And uh, if we can see if Bryce can pull up some samples there. And it's basically what they did is they just fed this system, this neural network, a ton of different kinds of music. Yeah. And Dude, these titles are learned. amazing. Uh, it says, so, Prompt, Bon Jovi, and the first six notes of Chopin, uh, uh, OP27 number two. Right. Uh, so I believe this is actually a synthesis from this MuseNet. I'm not hearing the Bon Jovi. Well, uh, it was given. In, Brian. It was given the first six notes of a Chopin nocturne, and it was asked to generate a piece in a pop style with piano, drums, bass, and guitar. The model manages to blend the two styles convincingly. So this is this is the intro. Wait for it. Oh, this is a little scary. Yeah. Need some lyrics, guys. Come on. I remember us talking about this well before GPT two came out, um, but the idea of machine learning music synthesis and i remember being resoundingly told that that was very far away at the time by who by you <laughs> but music <laughs> yes no music's been done music's been done before they've been doing yeah, the generated did, music did, did, didn't uh steven wolfram do a music thing yeah no bryce they've been they've been doing music with this sort of stuff yeah. as far as doing full-on lyrics and somebody singing mm-hmm. that's further out but no the, the this is this is the latest iteration of what we've been doing for Trying to use AI to simulate music in many ways predates textual generation because music is just a much more shorter sequence of notes. Mm-hmm. Um, Can they? Uh, but yeah, we've been. Yeah, uh, uh, these are just a bunch of examples. They don't have like a interactive thing that we could play with. Uh, no, it sounds like the uh, actual software will be put released May twelfth, so it might actually be out by the time you listen to this. Wow. Yeah, no, Bryce, you wanted me to tell you you were safe. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Here's another one. This one was prompted using the band Journey with piano, bass, guitar, and drums. <laughs> it comes out with Journey. <laughs> yeah.
By the way, opportunity for anybody who wants to have a gimmick, have a, 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 and a band, have all your music written by these AIs, have lyrics created word salad style with uh, with machine learning, get up on stage and, and perform it. Press a button. <laughs> yeah. Okay, kind of journey. I can kind of hear journey in this, I guess. So the point is, you know, we're not like going, oh my God, this is not, I know, everybody run for the hills, throw, burn your musical instruments, but this is where we are now. And, you know, the, the problem you're at right now when you're trying to create this stuff is you take a bunch of music samples, thousands of music samples or more, tens of thousands, you know, and you put them into a computer and it's got to go through and process all of those and try to discover patterns and do this sort of stuff in a naive sort of way. That computational power is intensive. It's really intensive. You find out that they took like maybe 100 GPUs and spent like, you know, 10 days doing this. As we know, with computing power, you know, today's super cluster is, you know, it's tomorrow's five iPhone. Years from now. Yeah, hundred dollar Android phone. So, actually, that's. Yeah. Uh, uh, I I don't know if you were maybe building up to this also uh, kind of new thing that came out over the past like week or so. Uh, yeah, really do, do you mind if yeah. I if I play you a little bit of, a little bit of something? Please. Go for it. Here. Yeah, it's one of the the side stages. At at uh, Lala Coachella, I think this is what the aliens in contact like they heard from Earth. This is um, this is a live stream uh, called Data Box, which is from their own description a neural network generating technical death metal via live stream twenty four seven. So all of this is procedurally generated. This is the equivalent of dialing in to watch a, a fractal get rendered. But basically, it's even. You can even hear it try to synthesize, like, uh, singing. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the vocals are the trippiest part. And you can, if you, if you really listen on, on so, like headphones, you can definitely hear like the quality and like the fidelity of it is not quite there. So, uh, but that I, stuff's only going to get better. What's funny is is now I have to think in terms of like, uh, are, are, when this gets posted on YouTube, are we going to get content ID'd for playing some of the procedurally <laughs> generated noise from another channel? No. Yeah. Though I, yeah. Though I do think they have actually put out records that has music created by a, by the similar neural network. Uh, 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 we train a neural network to listen to a Cave Master album for two days to generate 10 hours of audio. From then, Cave Master themselves curated and arranged the album, added samples, titled it, and made the cover. I uh, I showed up late to this, but uh, but I believe Brant posted a link to the article. Can can you tell me what Brant said about the the thing? Uh, there's a gizmo that watches a brain, and you just think about talking, and it was able to kind of um, make the words for you. Uh, I only caught the half end of that discussion when he was telling me, and I did not read the article, uh, and I can't pull up Slack on this yeah, computer. Okay. But, right. uh, yeah, I saw the headline for that. I sort of scanned by because it sounds similar to something else, but there may be maybe some new iterations on that. And that's the thing, too, is that, you know, you see these things like, oh, yeah, we kind of did a thing like that before, kind of did a thing like before, but then all of a sudden, yeah, now the thing's really amazing, has changed, and, you know, is... You know, I had a I had a verbot when I was a kid that you'd put in speaker into the microphone, and go go left, go left, you know, and then it would kind of go and go left, and now you know we have our voice assistants and things like that. that yeah, are, the the know. the headline was uh, scientists create speech from brain signals. A prosthetic voice decodes what the brain intends to say, not actually says, and generates mostly understandable speech. No muscle movement needed. This is this sounds to me. Look, uh, you put two of those. You, you put a gizmo on one person who thinks about talking. Put a gizmo on the other that takes the rendered speech and uh, uh, transducts it directly into the, um, the, the 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 hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. That sounds like telepathy. 
Yeah, and it's, if we've learned from anything in the last 10 years that making it very easy for us to go from the thing we think to telling everybody else about it, it won't cause problems. Ha! It won't cause yeah. problems. Um, I think... Uh, that I think I think telepathy has been kind of ruined. The, the the idea of how wonderful would it be had been the last 10, 15 years. It's ten years has really been ruined with Twitter and cell phones. When you realize <laughs> because because no, we're not awfully close idea. to I what telepathy a, a is. Stop gap. That's funny. <laughs> you know, moving my stupid. If anything, maybe we need a thing to make us make it harder to move our mouths. <laughs> <laughs> be cool. Mm-hmm. Um, also, in the world of the freaky sort of news and stuff is. You hear about some scientists were uh, decided like, hey, we got a little. We, we think we've got this little chemical elixir sort of thing that we can use it to revitalize cells, like brain cells that may have been dead. And what they're able to do is uh, they use this on some pig, pig dead pigs, pig brains, and they found a way to restore biological function in dead pig brains, like parts of the brain at least. And it's a very. They have a formula. Their formula is BrainX. A hemoglobin-based, acellular, non-coagulative, echogenic, and cryptoprotective perfusate that promotes recovery from anoxia, reduces right perfusion injury, prevents edema, edema, excuse me, edema, <laughs> edema, too, and metabolically supports the energy requirements of the brain. Totally not marketing speech. Um, so apparently they're working on a chemical. They said that their goal is that like, hey, listen, you know, we could use this to revitalize people who may be brain dead. You know, you're Ow. brain dead. They declare you dead. They give you a little injection. Next thing you know, you start to get neural activity. <laughs> What's funny is uh, I, I realized, oh, wait, there are people where they have a medical condition and this is a way to rehabilitate them. Uh, my immediate thought was best CSI ever, <laughs> where it's just like, just get them alive Who enough. Who killed you? Exactly. Yeah. Just get them alive <laughs> yeah. enough to point in the courtroom. <laughs> Well, the idea is that it could apply to everybody because kind of basically you decide you're dead when you're, you know, you can st- restart a heart, which that, you know, learning that we could restart a heart was a big deal. It was a big deal to realize, like, no, you can start that thing. What? Like, no, no, not dead. Like, we just start the heart. Oh, but they're alive. That's magical. We've, we've fought back the Grim Reaper. Like, well, then there's brain death, you know, and they're like, well, brain death, it can't stop. Like, well, no, actually, we can maybe a little bit while longer after the heart stops, we can still bring back the brain. And now they're like, yeah, no, we think we can extend that window of which we can bring back the brain. And that's when is dead, dead, which is a margin that keeps getting pushed. They bring up the ethical. There's what they say is the ethical problem. Like, well, if we keep bringing back these people, you know, you know, we we where are we going to get our organs from? I'm, I'm like, well, how about dead, dead people? OK, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know? well, I mean, I, I don't even know how much longer we're going to have organ harvesting as a problem full stop because we're, we're not going to harvest them from other people. We're going to grow them in a lab, right? We're going to grow them in pigs. I, sure, but it's when when we get which thing, you know, so if you have the brain X formulas on the market tomorrow now and you show up, and not, you know, we find out that like, oh, we can reduce the number of people who die from what we thought was a reversible brain damn, you know, brain death by injecting the brain X. It's like, well, great. We got half the organs now. But I'm like, yeah, and we have half the people saved. <laughs> and, yeah, and also, uh, I would love to push that forward. I would love for the problem to not be people are are dead, are brain dead, and instead we're running out of organs, right? Yeah. Like, I, I want I want that to be the frontier we are now pouring our time, effort, money, and research into. Yeah, uh, which alludes to sort of. I don't want to get into it because it was maybe some people still haven't, you know, three weeks later watched, you know, Avengers Endgame. But um, I, there's a, you know, the, the, at the end, there's a, there's a, Brian brought up the whole point of a, hey, here's the problem you have to deal with now, you know? Um, uh, I'm, maybe I misheard you when you were explaining this. I did not realize they were keeping these brains alive in jars. Well, I mean, it's easier to keep. It in a jar. What else, what else are you gonna do? Put it in an yeah. ashtray of a put in your lunchbox, no. Bryce. You know, just uh, keep it in your locker. Bryce, I'm with just... you. They, they, they don't listen to this. <laughs> I, I also thought it would be in a body. In a, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, that. Ooh, I, I. That gives me a lot of like skeevies well, about this now. No, <laughs> I mean that's that. Wait, 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 guys, back, back up. <laughs> This is how you're doing it in the lab. I'm not saying that they're gonna. That's gonna be the procedures. Like, oh, hey, yeah, yeah, you're an accident. Sorry, we gotta pull your brain out and put it into a jar. No, that's how you test the thing. Wait, you're putting this in a petri dish? 
I gotta go inside of a petri dish to get this cure? Like, no, 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 no. We just put the cells to test the thing. But this uh, is a brain. Man, I'm gonna take one of them pig brains. Funny. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it on a chain. It's gonna be my big piece. I'm gonna encrust it in diamond. That's a live pig brain in there. You don't I'm gonna that live pig brain swag, dog. Got a Jersey mm. Mike sandwich bag. I'm gonna put mine inside of there. Uh, one of the researchers. Is that a greasy sub? Nope. Pig brain alive. Uh, it does say one of the researchers does say this is quote this is not a living brain but it is a cellularly active brain, which I guess is living different. tissue, living uh, tissue, which is different from a living brain. From, yeah. I, okay. Still. <laughs> it's semantics land. It, <laughs> you know. It, it, no, the pro, the prospect is horrifying though. Imagine just being a brain with no body. In a, I'm uh, that is, that is very. I want you to imagine to every me. statement he said said by John Cleese. <laughs> is that a reference to a I thing? Don't know, I don't... Yeah, no, it's not a reference to anything, guys. Um, anyhow, point is, the point is, is like if you take it from a comedic point of view, it sounds like you know, no, it's not not dead, dead. You know, it's this thing. It's like, oh, it's like this. You're like, oh, okay. It's like it sounds almost like a comedic sketch. Yeah, no, yeah. but but I, I'm actually I'm dialed in on Bryce's take here. It's like I can imagine nothing more horrific. Imagine that you die, and then enough of who you are is uh, switches flip back on. You have no sensory input whatsoever, no sense of body, right. no no input, no sound, no output. Just what you're what I what, mean. Would, what, would take... that be a coma? No, uh, because a coma, uh, you, you're you're not conscious, right? Uh, we we experience you know sleep, but imagine, and even when we sleep, we're experiencing neurons firing that are telling us the story of uh, you know uh, dream craziness, right? But like the the idea of being like having nothing but your thoughts uh, is beyond can locked I, can in I syndrome. Just, you know, yeah. begin to say this is not to our listeners. This is not what these people are doing. Yeah, no, it's yeah, not, I yeah, understand that. Well, I, uh, hey, Andrew, I don't know if you know this. We do a show. Is. It's called it, Weird Things, where we explore these topics I, and not I, shut I, each we, other we, down. We we, we we took we t we took a story <laughs> that a writer said. Here's the ethical thing to think about. And then we're running with that. I just want to be very clear. And I guess we weird things we're allowed to do this, but I'll make this. Yes. I yes. not to say that people ever mistake and go, oh, sure. If, particularly when it comes to like I don't know this topic or whatever that, that we get this misunderstanding the larger public about this or by science journalists. Sure. Oh, I'm not saying there I are death panels out there. The third I'm... part that David Benioff wrote Gemini Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, true I've, fact. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just. Get it together, sheeple. <laughs> I, again, I know that this I, is not okay. the My, thing that I, happened, All but... I want to say is, yes, okay. let's endorse. I'm, okay. I'm, how many times have we had these things where we're frustrated because we see a science journalist or somebody like this paraphrase or make a mistake about something? Like, well, no, this is the way it is. We're dealing with a topic that, like, there are so many people who are anti this. There are so many people anti trying to do resurrections or anti trying to do this technology. We're not. There are people anti this. And I to me, it's a serious issue because it's like how much time, how many times do we have to sort of fight this? Like, no, we have this opportunity to make things really cool and do this. Let's explore this. I'm just trying to say, like, just so oh, you know, it's not what the Brain X people 100%, are doing. 100 percent. Let me just say this. I am fully on the side of resurrection and brain. Uh, 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 I'm I'm on the record as stating that I would like to live forever and I will take any and every pathway to get there. I believe that the right side of history is always on. Uh, life extension and life preservation like that is uh, every time that we have pushed that line forward it has only taken somebody living an extra couple years or being saved from what otherwise would have been death somebody that you care about that you're like oh well now i'm cool about it that being said i am interested in the brian and bryce uh, uh thought experiment because i don't know whether or not it would be indistinguishable from just a a coma or or something else where it's just soupy uh uh nonsense thought like i don't even know if time would be a uh, 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 thought of in the same way if i were just a a, a brain in a jar and and understanding that's never the goal of what anybody would want to do with a technology like this i i i, I don't have any clue so it's like for me right now it's like yeah I would certainly not like to be in a coma. That does not sound like a pleasurable thing. I wouldn't like to be in 
mega coma <laughs> where I'm just a brain in a jar. Sure. Well, like, and then and the, cor the corollaries to that, look at sensory deprivation research. What happens sure. when you deprive the brain of signals for extended periods of time? And it's not good. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I wonder. I wonder if would you, because uh, we have sensory deprivation tanks, and we know that you begin to hallucinate. Like absent mm -hmm. any sensory input, your brain is like, well, there's got to be something there, and so it takes noise and starts kind of enhancing mm -hmm. the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think you would you would you would begin to manufacture a reality? The brain probably has some form of at least nerves pain sensing nerves they would have to sure yeah, no pain thing. sensing nerves i'll no tell you what, we are we are going oh, on a path that's wow. going to have joe rogan chucking his brain in a jar tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> well the 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 question is is like when you do there's a limit to how far they like to do sensory deprivation because you start to kind of go you can go nutty and that's the thing is you might reach a point where your brain just starts to break down your cognitive functions break down and then the the, the observer may stop functioning sure um yeah, and and this is from the NPR story. Just to to to, to double down on what you were saying, Andrew. Uh, the scientists constantly monitor the brain, the pig brain's electrical activity. Latham says, if they had seen any evidence that signals associated with consciousness had emerged, they would have used anesthesia and cooling to shut that down immediately. Um, so that's because they're trying, you know, trying to develop a thing that would eventually be like an injectable or something. You're in the hospital, whatever, and like, oh, they're dead. Like, guard this organs. No, wait. We got brain X, you know, and you inject it in the brain, and then all of a sudden, like, hey guys, what I miss? That's the goal. But to get there, like, they got to put a bunch of brains in jars. And and the the point that you guys are making, what they'd be like? That's a real fear in the research phase. Is you don't want to have this animal and pigs are smart suffering, if it's yeah. possible. So like, we'll try to revitalize the cells, and they say that yeah, as soon as they see some higher conscious things functioning, they're like, all right, we're gonna put you to sleep. Don't let it get there because that's that is a big fear of we don't know, we don't know. But is also, it wouldn't that partially be the goal? Or I guess not in this early phase. You wouldn't want any subjects to go through that. But wouldn't the goal of of restarting the brain be to also continue higher higher consciousness when it's connected to a spinal cord and a body right. and everything else? Right, right, right. Um, it, hmm. And that's one of the things they talk about as a possibility of doing brain transplants with this. This is. Just to me, just sounds like I mean, I can't even fix my freaking iPhone, so I mean, it's just I can't even comprehend, you know, mm. doing that. But yeah. scary times, guys. But cool. But cool. You know, I I, I obviously have a very knee jerk reaction to this because I get just I mean, and and I know we're all on the same page. It's just, it's just, it's like you you click the next thing to like ah the ethical dilemma of this thing that oh that will save millions of lives, and that's not us, but it's that you know. You know, I love Ron Bailey's talk about this. Ron Bailey reason, and actually, is where I found it was Ron Bailey's article about this. He mentions the ethical considerations of it and all that too. So I highly recommend Ron Bailey. His coverage on you know and everything is wonderful. Um, but you know, we we sometimes you know shut down ideas and scientific thought too quickly because it's too alien. It's too hard for us to comprehend. So, Dude, you know, I got it. There's arguments about like you know what are we did with you know uh, stem cell research. You know that. We might have been living in an age of cures and other sorts of things like that, maybe. But there's some people said that, no, it just didn't turn out the way we wanted it to. But gene therapy stuff and, you know, there's the I don't know what the right approach is, but we can look at these technologies. And go, Man, the, imp the implication is amazing. We want to be approach it not here, but elsewhere rationally. Yes. Anyhow. Hey, man, uh, I, I got picks. If you guys want to do picks, let's do picks. Yeah. Uh, did you guys ever listen to the podcast uh, Missing Richard Simmons? Did you ever, did you ever give that a try? Dude uh, no, dude yeah. basically used to work out at uh, Richard Simmons' uh, Slimmons studio, and then one day Richard Simmons just uh, you know up and stopped showing up. And uh, so he basically says, I'm going to do something crazy and do a podcast as I try to track down where's, uh, why, why won't Richard Simmons come out of his house? And uh, uh, did the whole thing, and very clearly – from the outside perspective, I don't have any insider knowledge on this, but it seemed like around episode eight, it was like 
So anyway, Richard Simmons' lawyers uh, called to assure us that he's fine and we should stop doing this podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, great podcast, team. That's the end of the season. <laughs> that uh, that RSS feed uh, went a little bit dormant. They're retooling it into a new show now. Uh, that's what, that's uh, which brings me to my pick. Oh. Uh, he uh, he did. He's making it into an anthology series, and he did. Uh, I just finished uh, all of uh, Surviving Y two K. It's like uh, it's like four Y2K stories trying to put a perspective on the hysteria that, that struck a lot of people and why it is that we respond to those things. And, you know, he uh, injects himself into the story directly on that in a very um, uh, it, it's 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 a really interesting way. Um, the he but goes back in time to cause Y2K. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I guess I'll, I'll spo spoil can, if you can spoil somebody else's personal story that he's already told in public. Uh, he talks about getting married and then uh, in the run up to Y2K, realizing that he's gay and the experiences oh, wow. uh, that he describes uh, occasionally in graphic detail. Um, so uh, uh, it, it, it was a fascinating story. But the one I'm loving right now is running from cops where it talks about the fact that we've had 19 seasons of cops and uh, there's a lot that depending on what lens you look at look at it it's like oh it's journalism it's a ride along it's uh, they're telling the story but then that changes when you realize that no but the police have total editorial control about how it goes out and then you start to hear the stories of well I would never take a minor drug bust and then put 4 minutes of question and answer about why somebody takes drugs that's a thing as a cop i would never do but the producers need to flesh out the segment and then you start to blur those lines of like these are these are keepers of the peace and people that we we have to trust implicitly what happens if they're also essentially game show hosts and then uh it, it, it and then like they watch 100, 850 some odd episodes and they log what type of arrests uh, show up there. And you would think if it's a remotely accurate uh, representation of what it's like to be a cop, then you would see something, uh, something close to the normal distribution of uh, arrests. But instead, because drug arrests are very simple narratives that the cops who have editorial control like to tell those stories. Uh, as a result, you get a completely distorted view, and then you get the feedback loop effect of like the war on drugs caused uh, cops, which caused a doubling down of the war on drugs. Um, some really fascinating, thorny ethical considerations, and uh, and it's just fascinating. I'm really enjoying it. You, uh, they're only like three or four episodes into running from uh, running from cops right now, but you can listen to the whole thing if you do Stitcher Premium which I'm thinking about maybe doing just so I can binge the whole thing. That is, that is a very interesting, like that debate of like how much the, obviously opening up law enforcement and having transparency is great, but is it when it becomes a TV product, it's not as transparent as we feel. And I'm also like, I'm one of these people like when I've heard like, Oh, they decided not allow, not allow cameras into a courtroom or whatever. I'm like, I don't have a problem with that. You know, I mean, if we're doing transcripts or stuff like that, cause I don't know. Do they belong there or not? I mean, I think having, you know, maybe there should be an official record of what's there that you could go back and check. But to put TV cameras and stuff in courtrooms and stuff is, well, not every person who's accused of murder has to deal with that. And if you're if you're dealing with that, then it's going to be your case is going to be different than something else. So I don't know. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I wonder uh, what we will look back on this live PD show in a few years um, in in the same light, which is like. It's an actual live stream of cops out and about uh, and all of the same implications, except it's literally not edited. Well, and, and we've we've already seen precursors of, of those uh, discussions because, uh, uh, you know, that that terrible New Zealand attack, uh, the dude live streamed mm -hmm. it on Facebook right. and uh, um, which, yeah, well, I mean, there's there's very uh, creepy questions. Yeah. But anyway, uh, headlongpodcast.com, you can see all that. Uh, all three of those uh, I highly recommend. Yeah. Missing Richard Simmons is good, even if the ending is definitely like, oh, they found him. <laughs> well, turns out he's just at home he's taking just... her easy. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> well, uh, any other picks? I have a pick. I have a pick. Uh, okay. This will be a few weeks old by the time you hear this, but uh, it just came out today. Uh, Comedy Bang Bang, kind of one of my staple podcasts from a long time, 
uh, just had their 10th anniversary the week that we're recording this. And so to celebrate it, they did this big 10 hour episode of uh, all sorts of guests coming Holy in. Holy cow, and doing, big names. Yeah, and, and doing um, uh, doing characters. It is so long that in the public feed, it's two separate five-hour episodes. Wow. Um, I am only like not even an hour into it, but it's very good. They put all your favorites up top, and uh, it's it. Yeah, it so far promises to be a very a very good time. It's uh it's been a l I kind of fell off the comedy bang bang uh uh bandwagon not very long ago. Um but this is Comedy this, Bang Wagon. <laughs> but oh. this is uh this is the sort of thing that I think if you had an interest in the show is worth uh uh try g- checking in on. So cool. cool. Yeah. Uh so I part of the reason why we are um uh, uh, doing episodes uh, early is because both Andrew and I are going to be out of the country uh, at, at the same time. And part of the thing that I uh, had to deal with was I used to have global entry, which was able to get me through customs coming back a lot faster. That lapsed, and I have not had the time to get uh, uh, it you know, re- reactivated basically on time. So I'm going to be trying something. This is a pre-pick. It's my, you know, a live episode down the road might, you know, reveal this one to be a bummer. But I've heard very, very good things about Mobile Passport. Mobile Passport is an app that basically allows you, when you're coming into certain ports, uh, to uh, pre-file all the things that you normally declare uh, up at a guy in customs. So if you're traveling out of the country... Uh, You basically take a you scan your passport. The passport gets uh, scanned. You do all the questions that they would normally ask for you. And then you get a little QR code that has its own separate line when you're coming back into the country. Now, apparently the uh, the free version of this app, which had been very popular. Now, many of the best features are in a paid version of the app that is, you know, a couple bucks. But. I will say this, if it works the way that it says it works and you are able to skip a massive customs line coming back into the country, uh, it, it is it is worth uh, 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 you know chopping off a couple bucks to to skip that line that can oftentimes stretch into the you know uh, hour range coming back. So uh, yeah, I would you, you know what this reminds me of um, uh, in a similar vein, the idea of virtualizing what traditionally is a face to face interaction. Uh, I had a I forget what it was, but I needed to get something notarized and I was able to use a online notary. Have you guys ever done this? Mm-hmm. You, all you need is a webcam. And uh, and basically, you, you hold up your ID, you do this, and you sign mm. in front of them, and, and you don't have to go find a notary. I thought that was wow. pretty great. Very cool. Yeah. Like, I now touch your nose. Yeah, I mean, there is yeah. kind of that. Hold it, up it, a newspaper it, with today's date. Uh, it, <laughs> like, you could tell that essentially what they're doing is, you know, it's being recorded, but but they have to, in order to say, yes, you are the person who is yeah. signing the thing. Right. How long before we can't use that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see. You, you could deep fake, motion track a pass. Oh jeez! Yeah. Or if you had a good enough fake with a bad enough webcam, or or a, a stand-in. I mean, I suppose that's no different than. I mean, if you're committing fraud, you're committing fraud. You could just as easily find somebody who looks pretty close to somebody and you steal their idea or make a, uh, well, make a copy yeah, of it yeah. or something. But that that's not that's that's not the just as easily. You know, you, the, if some it were a GitHub release from, hey, use this thing to fake a webcam thing where you can do it versus. I got to go find a Brian Brushwood. Well, we know a lot of Brian Brushwood people look like you, but I'm saying that's you know, like, I think it's great now, but I'm saying it's like, it's, it's, if you want to commit the fraud, sure you can. It's how easy it becomes, mm-hmm. you know, you know, it's like we realized email spoofing like, Oh no, I can, I can fake this coming from that email address. I can fake it coming from this phone number, which we're like, ah, it's fine. Email and phone numbers are great. No, they're not. Um, my pick Valley of the boom. Uh, Nat Geo has done this, process of creating shows that like are mixed between narrative and documentary they did have the mars thing where i thought you know the documentary i think was way stronger than the narrative stuff valley of the boom was the story of basically the netscape the internet boom in the 1990s and uh pretty pretty if you if you get past the sort of the way they're telling the story which can be very annoying it's kind of it's over the top but it's like you're watching scenes of them recreating stuff and people talking about what happened and it's a you know a kind of a neat overview of that period and that time. So, 
uh, worth checking out if you want to check it out. Valley of the Boom. Cool. Oh, there you go. There you go. I'll it's see. a and some, uh, so, you know, the story of Netscape, which was, which was the biggest story until we forgot about it. And then there's stories of other people like uh, the guy, who, you know, like the complete scam artist who created one of these, you know, an Internet startup. And like while he was a convicted felon on the run and stuff and oh, some other funny things. And then, you know, talking to Steve Case and stuff, the guys who did the globe dot com and whatnot. So anyhow, wow. wonderful. It's been weird. Yeah. Hey, there you go. All right, got to run. Awesome. Yeah, we do too. Thank you, everybody, for checking this out. We'll be back uh, with Cord Killers in a little bit. Uh, Justin, you do, are you doing any stream? No, I guess you're, you're heading out early tomorrow, right? Yep, 5.30 in the morning. I'm flying down to Austin, and we're going to record a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. and you're going to see it later. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All righty, well, you will see us here later for Cord Killers in a couple hours. Have a good yeah. rest of Monday, everybody. Bye. Hey. Bye.